Now what's that? Ooh, sort of a voodoo stuff, eh? Look, there's some pharaonic voodoo here. It's a sort of a reptilian coming out of the out of her stomach here. From the back. I don't know what that is. Look at it. It's like on the 50 francs. Uh Frank bill, the money bill of the of the Swiss. Look at that. Yeah, some Swiss voodoo. What is this? Oh. Probably burning things here. Some real weird stuff coming out of the back here. That's weird, man. Oh, yeah, look at the arms. It's a reptilian coming out of the back. See? You see? This is Switzerland, folks. It's the, the home of evil, the pharaohs. So this creature crawling out of the back of a human being is the very same creature we can see here on the Swiss 50 francs bill. Here where the high nobility, this is not the low nobility, where the descendants of... Uh, uh, Juliana von Sachsen Coburg, Sax Coburg Gotha, you know, like the English royal house. Real funny things going on here in the land of hatred, Octagon. And this reptilian crawling out of the back of a human being even has these uh, three fingers or three toed um, hands which are quite typical for reptilians and uh, well you, you, you can see it on a chicken you know uh, yeah so why on earth is it would a normal human being make something like this you know and this is also the reason why they uh, a lot of masonic and um, hidden forces they do the masonic m gesture which I'll show it to you now. Well, we can see it here too on some Babylonian stuff. You know, typical three fingers as this thing crawling out of the back of a human being in Octagon, the home of the devil, Switzerland. It's probably Semiramis. Nice stuff, eh? And even human beings have it sometimes related to some former events or mixtures which is in their DNA and coming back like sometimes as a regression. And some more, here we can see the M sign. Yeah, there's a lot of artists, politicians and most of it all the aristocracy or let's say the fair aristocracy doing these sort of things. It's in their DNA. And sometimes, you know, this is called Mendel's Laws. Um, sometimes it just comes back and this is why this lovely lady here is doing the M sign as well you know uh, it's also giving two V's like in Uppies the, um, the protection of the pharaonic empire so this is Ren Bedok And in France, La Reine Pédoc, she really had one or two feet like this. And she was very much related to a little people like uh, um, Le Cargo. And this one apparently really existed. Of course, it's the fair aristocracy. And uh, now they're, they're the ones in power. Uh, that says La Reine Pédoc, the Queen of Pédoc, it's uh, etymologically of uh, Pied Dois. And Dois, uh, wa is a, um, or Pas de Dois, it is a goose. So it means goose foot. And she was the Queen of the Goose Foot. Now oh, here's a Fleur d'Alice, it's all the fair aristocracy. So this is La Reine Pédoc, who really existed. So that says the Queen Pidoc. 
my old book. And the Queen of Pedoc, the Queen with the Goose Foot, she was uh, very much related with a very special tribe of people. There were over one million in France. It's called Le Cago. And you can see they have this the leopard sign of the uh, the goose foot or the reptilian foot on their chests. This is a very old drawing from France. I already showed you this. Even one of Napoleon's generals, he was a cago. And um, well, there are even some pictures of them made in the 50s. And um, so this is why this three finger um, reptilian, it has three fingers crawling out of the back. Here you can see it, the three fingers. Typical reptilian sign. They're all wearing it here in the Middle Ages. And these people, the cargo, uh, they um, they were missing some um, uh, some things in their organs, and they could only live in the mountains, Switzerland, you know, and here in the south of France in the Pyrenees. But they probably made it to Switzerland. So here, for example, is a picture of a cagotte. So this is the female with an E. So if you want to look it up, it's only with uh, without an E. Yeah, there were millions of them. Now they're probably mixed and uh, went to Switzerland. So I hear some more people from history doing the M sign. I just call it the M sign, but it is in fact uh, Le Pédoc. The, uh, the goose foot or the reptilian foot. I don't know who that is, some English bloke, I think. Here the Pope giving the M sign. Or the old Pope. A Mason doing the M sign. And who is this doing the M sign? I saw this guy before somewhere. Who is that again? Oh yes, of course, he's doing the M sign as well, Mr. Mason. And another Mason doing the M sign. Hello, you traitor. Another M sign, this is Joseph Smith who invented the Mormons. Hello, Mr. Mormon. Well, we all know this fella here. Hello. And this is Martin Luther doing the M sign, the the guy who invented the uh, the Protestants. Only he was part of the nobility, just as his wife Katharina von Bora. <laughs> All nobility, aristocracy, just as the uh, this princes of the high nobility in Bern, Switzerland. And he invented pro the Protestants. You know, the Protestant movement only to put people up against each other and kill the Germans by the Swiss mercenaries by the way and uh, by a difference in the religion race color of skin or ideology like communism against fascism they just their business is to put people up against each other so he too is doing the M sign and here's the monument for Martin Luther an obelisk, which is a symbol of the Pharaoh domination, and uh, so he's part of them. He was an aristocrat. So, look at this picture here. I'm going to show another picture of it. So he's part of the gang, really. So here it is again, together with his wife, von Bora. They are all nobility, pretending to be a monk. He even had children. What a monk, eh? More like a monk, e. And this guy hated the Jews very, very, very much. He even wrote a lot of things about it. As the the whole of the aristocracy, they hate the Jews. You know, look at the World War Two. They were all von von in the SS killing Jews, and um, well, they are the pharaohs. I mean, that's logical, isn't it? The pharaohs. Of course, the pharaohs hate the Jews. There's nothing new, and they are the aristocracy here in Europe. 
pretending to be monks and um, still doing the same thing. Nothing has changed really. So this is the official Apis hieroglyph, just as the uh, as the M symbol forming two V's. Here the two upside down V's, just as is in this old French car here, which is still being made today. And it is a symbol of Apis, the bull, and this is the symbol the uh, symbolizes the protection of the royal pharaonic empire. And this is, uh, to my opinion, one of the reasons that they uh, they give the M symbol. Of course, the pharaohs, it's all related, and the aristocracy, and the Freemasons, it's all one thing, it's all related. And um, uh, there might be a reptilian thing in it as well. Um, they are so different from us, just as the Swiss are so different from other human beings. Um, I, you know, very, very different. So here are the two V's, just as in the M symbol. And this is the old French car, still being made today. And in those days, the uh, the means of transport was a bull as, of, as well. Yeah, this is. It looks like a bull. Look at the two eyes here. It looks like a bull. Oh, there. The French bull, the pharaonic bull. So the M symbol is also giving these two V's, and one of the V's is of course the Templar symbol. As the um, uh, as they also protect the um, Egypt and the royal, the aristocracy and the royal fair aristocracy of Egypt. Uh, it's all related. The bull is a symbol of the protection of the. Um, and that's why a lot of police forces, they have it in their logos, armies, because it protects the Egypt and the pharaohs. The Templars did as well. One V. Etc, etc. So here we can see a painting of uh, Anna Fyodor Fyodorovna, as in feudal, Fyodorovna, you see, of Russia. And her real name was Julian, Juliana on Saxon Coburg and she's giving the hand sign the Masonic M as people call it but it's actually Piedoc Pedoc like in uh, the Queen of Pedoc and uh, which is a, well, a sign of the reptilians but it's also forming two V's like in the Apis pharaonic symbol which um, is the symbol of the uh, of the protection of the pharaonic empire which is the the two V's on top of each other. So it says Anna Fyodorovna, there, living in Switzerland. Now there's the Grail. Means our blood is here. Our descendants are here. Some more reptilians on it, or what is it? And this is the house of Anna Fyodorovna, which was not her name. Her name was Juliana von Sachsen Coburg. A niece of Queen Victoria. <laughs> and we all saw the reptilian coming out of the back, didn't we? I'm here to expose the secret and the mystery that is going on in the kingdom of darkness. For I am there working with devil for 990 years before the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. My encounter with Christ. I will explain many things in this record my assignment in Nigeria. What I know about the anti-God kingdom, anti-Christ kingdom, and satanic kingdom. I will tell you how we establish fake churches all around. I will tell you the, the power of devil in Christendom today. How we are using the, 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 the women of the last day against the glory of the Lord in the church. I will tell you the secret behind makeup, the secret behind abortion, the secret behind apami and attachment. I will also tell you the secret behind the gospel musician today, something that is going on in the schools today, university, secondary school, primary school, how we, people have got initiated in those schools. How somebody can get involved with the mark of physicists in hospital, in bank. Alice, a very beautiful girl, 
told me that she was an accountant with the Standard Bank and that she would make me rich and give me all that I needed in this life, and said, Just settle down and enjoy yourself. My first impression about Lagos was true after all. A few months ago I was in a small hut in a small village, surrounded by hatred, starvation, and suffering. And here I am, living in a big city, in a well-furnished flat, with a beautiful wife who had promised to give me all that life could offer. She showered me with gifts, money, clothing, love. I never knew that the world was filled with these good things. The devil indeed is a deceiver. The scripture rightly says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Only the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, can give life and give it more abundantly. John 10.10 10. Dear reader, the devil has no free gift. Whatever he gives you is for an exchange with your soul. This state of euphoria was short-lived because after a period of three months, strange things started happening. The Mysterious Experiences One night, I woke up in the dead of the night and found a boa constrictor beside me. I wanted to shout but could not. Some nights, I would wake up to see Alice's body as transparent as a cellophane bag. Some nights, she would disappear and reappear. Some nights, I would hear strange noises or dancing in the living room. I could no longer bear these fearful happenings, so I decided to ask her, and the first reaction was violence and serious warning. She said, Do not ask me this question again, or else I will deal with you. From then, I knew my life was in danger. I then preferred the sufferings in the village to what I came to discover. I became afraid of her. Two days passed, and she came with smiles, gifts, and hugged me. She told me how much she loved and cared for me, and encouraged me not to be afraid, and promised to explain things to me later. She took me to a nightclub, and there reminded me of her promise to make me rich, and told me, One day, you will know all that I know. We came back, and life continued as normal between us. Inwardly, I knew I was in danger. But how could I escape, and where would I escape to? It is important to note here that Alice's parents did not know that their daughter, though young, was involved seriously in occultism and spiritualism, and she seriously warned me never to tell them if I loved my life. Dear reader, can you imagine a twenty-year-old girl doing all these things? The outside world saw her as a very beautiful and harmless girl working with a big bank, but she was the devil's agent. When we die, there's no place for us to go. Because if somebody dies and he doesn't have the Spirit of God, your spirit will be stranded immediately when you give up. There will be no escort angel that will lead you to direction, to, to, the, to the place you're supposed to go. So our spirit was hanged in the air. Suddenly there are some demons called Gog and Magog. They appear at the battlefield with their tank. They load blood to the deep sea. And when they are about to go, they discover we are there hanging up. They now arrest all our soul and took us to the deep sea. When we get to the deep sea, they take us to the planet of the kingdom of the coast. When we get there, they put on a straight line. They got all of us initiated by giving us a cup of blood. We drank this blood as a covenant of initiation. And after being initiated, they now carry, they now send for our master plan in order to give us assignments. There are a lot of Alice's in the world today, as you will find out later in this book. A Horrific Discovery One day, after she had left for work, I decided to search the flat. As young as she was, the flat was well furnished. She had four refrigerators, and on opening one I saw human skulls, different parts of human body, both fresh and dry. Inside the ceiling were skeletons. In another corner of one of the rooms, I saw what I later knew as a chamber, a water pot filled with blood and a small tree in the center of the pot, a calabash and a red cloth by it. I could not continue. Now I knew that I was a dead man, and since I had nowhere to run to, I surrendered my life to whatever comes, life or death, and kept sealed lips. Alice came back from work, and from the way she looked at me, I knew that right in her office she knew what I did in the house. Encounter with the Occult World The following day she requested me to follow her to a meeting. I was already a captive and had no choice. We went to a very big building on the outskirts of Lagos. On arriving, the building had an underground conference hall. 
I was instructed by Alice to enter backwards. I obeyed and entered with my back. She also did the same. The hall was so large with about five hundred young men and women seated in a circle, and seated above them was a man whose head could only be seen, and without a body, as the leader. Some of these young people were students, undergraduates, graduates, teachers, etc. Alice pressed a button on the wall, and a seat came out from the ground, and I sat. She did the same, and another came out for her, and she sat. She introduced me to the congregation as a new member, and they applauded and welcomed me. Alice was promoted as a result of this. All that they discussed in the meeting I never understood. At the end of it, and as we were about to leave, I was asked to come back alone the following day by the leader. This was my first encounter with the occult world. That same night at 2 a.m., and this is the usual hour of meetings and dangerous operations by all the forces of darkness and their agents, Alice woke me up and revealed certain things to me. She said, I am not an ordinary human being. I am half human and half spirit, but mainly of the spirit. What you see in my chamber is what I use during my prayers every morning, so that the spirits will guide me through the day. As for the skeletons, I will tell you later. I never said a word. She brought out some books on world mysteries for me to read, and with my inquisitive mind, I decided to read them. Shortly I became interested, and immediately she saw that I was now interested. Unknown to me, she sent my name to an occult society in India. As previously instructed, the following day I went back to the society alone, and there met nine others and some witnesses. We were to be initiated. We were called out to the center of the hall, and the following things were administered to us. Number one, a concoction that looked like putty was rubbed on our bodies. This qualifies you as a full member. Number two, a glass shot of oil-like liquid was given to us to drink. This qualifies you to be an agent. Number three, a gunpowder-like substance was rubbed on our heads. This qualifies you to study their mysteries. Unknown also to me, this initiation ceremony was being recorded in India, and the next day I received a letter from them. In the letter, I was instructed to stain the letter with my own blood and to post it back to them through a means they described, not the post office. I did. From this point, there was no turning back. Turning back meant death, as one was always reminded, and I knew there was no more hope for me. In the kingdom of darkness, they have level by level, grade by grade. When, you are, when we are talking about grade, there are some grade called local level, federal level, national level, international level, and worldwide level. This is five stage. That is why some people call five star, five star. Some people may draw it in their church. Some people may draw it in their signboard. They don't know five star mean five stage power of the world. It's talking about the kingdom of darkness. It's not talking about Christendom at all. So this five star is grade by grade. When, you are, when the local level is dealing with somebody, they can do whatever they like for you without, without looking for your, for your life and plan. But this higher level I'm talking about, I'm talking about CC's realm, because there's 3-3 three, three realm, CC's realm, 7-7 seven, seven realm, and 9-9 nine, nine realm, and above. But this day, we are into CC's realm in the kingdom of marine, marine water. And in there, before they do anything or take any step on you, they need to ask for your master plan. And this master plan can only be gotten in the kingdom of Nine Nine Realm, where the international demons are dwelling. The same into school. When I get to that school in Deep Sea, it's university school they send me to. You see, this Deep Sea is a very big place, bigger than the whole world, the whole global world. Very big place. I don't know how I can describe it. The whole world we are now, they are just like a, maybe a, a local government or a state in that place. Very big place. If you see their stadium there, we can't compare it with what we have here. If you see their university, their hospital, everything we have here, they have. They even have more than us because they are civilized more than all. They have been there, existing there before, Jan before, God, before Genesis 1, before God created this world. You know, they are fallen angels. They have been descended from heaven since they make mistake, and they have been here on this earth in the water covered by the darkness. Covenant with Alice. Early one morning, 
She told me there was an important ceremony to be performed in the house. At 2 a.m., she brought a crawling child, a girl, alive. Before my eyes, Alice used her fingers and plucked out the child's eyes. The cry of that child broke my heart. She then slaughtered the child into pieces and poured both the blood and the flesh into a tray and asked me to eat. I refused. She looked straight at me, and what came out of her eyes cannot be explained in writing. Before I knew what was happening, I was not only chewing the meat, but also licking the blood. While this was happening, she said, This is a covenant between us. You will never say out anything you see me do, or anything about me to any human on earth. The day you break this covenant, your own is gone, meaning that the day I break this covenant, I will be killed. After this incident, I started having strange feelings inside me. I was changed and could no longer control myself. A word of warning to mothers. Do you know your house helps? What is his or her background like? Do you care to find out all about him or her before entrusting the lives of your children to him or her? How did Alice get the little child she slaughtered, you may ask? Therefore, parents, know the background of your house helps. When Alice saw that she had succeeded in getting me fully involved in spiritism and was fast growing in it, she was satisfied and knew her mission was accomplished. She found a flat for me, helped furnish it, and thereafter severed the relationship. Covenant in India The Society in Delhi, India, sent me a second letter asking me to come over to India. In it also I was instructed to do the following. Eat excreta, eat decaying smelling rats, and to have sexual intercourse with spirits in the cemetery at night. After fulfilling the above, I was bound never to have any sexual intercourse with any women on earth. I sent a reply to their letter informing them that I had no visa, neither do I know how to get to India. At this time, I had started doing business. I was a serious smuggler, but because of these powers behind me, I had no trouble with customs, etc. I started having a lot of money, food and materials were no longer scarce. One day, I locked my flat and went out. Coming back, I opened the door and behold, a man sitting in the parlor. I was afraid. He said, Are you not Emmanuel Amos? I said, I am. He said, I have been sent to come and collect you to India, so get ready. I locked everywhere, went and sat beside him on the cushion ready for the next order. But like lightning, he touched me and we vanished. The next place I saw myself was in a big conference hall in Delhi, India, with a large congregation already seated and waiting to welcome us. They brought out files where my name had already been written and asked me to sign beside it. I did. A tray containing human flesh cut in pieces with a basin of blood were brought. An empty jug was given to each person. Then a man without a head went round pouring the blood and flesh into the jugs. Different candles and incenses were being burnt also. The headless man made some incantations, and everyone drank the blood and ate the meat, and the meeting was over. The Initiations in India Now the period of my testing had come. I was sent to a valley about 200 meters deep. In it were assorted dangerous reptiles and wild beasts. These were to torture me. I was not to shout, for if I did, I have failed the exam, and the consequence was death. After seven days of agony, I was brought out and sent to a place called India Jungle. In this jungle, I saw different types of demonic birds, demonic because some had faces like dogs, some like cats, etc., yet with wings. Inside this jungle was a cave, and this cave is only opened by these demonic birds. They opened the cave and I went inside. The things I saw are hard to explain. There were terrible creatures. Some looked like human beings but with tails and without human faces. This was another place of torture. The torture there could best be described as semi-hell. I was in that state for seven days and was brought out. I was then sent to a very big library that contained large volumes of mystic books to study. I later picked out two books, Abyssinia, which means destruction, and Asinna, which means giving life or curing. Later I was given more books. I was instructed to build a chamber as soon as I returned to Nigeria with the following things in it. A native water pot filled with human blood, a living tree inside, a human skull, vulture feathers, wild animal skins, boa skin, and a big shiny laterites beside the pot. 
The blood inside the water pot is to be taken every morning with an incantation. I was also instructed never to eat any food cooked by humans, but that I would be fed supernaturally. With all these instructions, I came back to Nigeria the same way I went, and fulfilled all. Back home in Nigeria. I had now become a part and parcel of the spirit world, and could travel at will to any part of the world. According to the books I brought, spirit beings are living in space. Perhaps they would increase my powers. So I decided to try. I came out of my house, made some incantations, and called the whirlwind and disappeared. I found myself in space and saw these spirit beings. What do you want? they asked. I told them I wanted powers. I came back to earth after two weeks, having acquired powers from them. Like I said earlier, I no longer could control myself. Despite all these powers I had already received, I still needed more and more powers. I then decided to go into Underworld to prove what was written in the books given to me. One day I went to a hidden place in the bush, made some incantations as stated in the books, and commanded the ground to open. The ground opened, and the demons created steps immediately. I stepped in and went right inside the ground. There was total darkness that can only be compared with one of the plagues that occurred in Egypt, as recorded in the Bible. I saw a lot of things that are hard to explain. I saw people chained, people used for making money. Their duties are to work day and night to supply money to their captors. I saw some elite society members who came in to do some sacrifices and would go back to the world with some gifts given to them by the spirits controlling the place. I saw some church leaders who came for powers, powers to say a thing that is accepted without questioning in the church. I stayed for two weeks and came back after receiving more powers. People saw me as young and innocent, but never knew I was dangerous. There are lots of such people around. Only those in Christ Jesus are safe in the real sense of safety. Covenant with the Queen of the Coast One evening I decided to have a walk. Along Ebute Meta bus stop, I saw a young beautiful lady standing. I never spoke a word to her. The next day while passing also I saw her still at the same spot. The third day I saw her still at the same spot, and while passing she called me. I stopped and introduced myself to her as Emmanuel Amos, but she refused introducing herself. I asked her name and address, but she only laughed. She asked mine and I told her the street only. When I was about to leave, she said she would visit me one day. In my mind I said that was impossible. I did not give her my house number. How then could she come? But true to her words, I heard a knock on my door after a week of that meeting at the bus stop. There she was, the mysterious lady. I welcomed her in my mind. I wondered who this beautiful lady was, and did she know she was treading on dangerous grounds? I entertained her, and she left. After this first visit, her visits became regular, without any relationships. I noticed that in her visits, she kept to a particular time, and would not come a minute earlier or later. In some of her visits, I would take her to the Lagos Bar Beach, or to the Paramount Hotel, or Ambassador Hotel. All this while, she still did not tell me her name. I decided not to worry, since I knew the relationship would not develop more than that. I had already been instructed never to touch a woman. Suddenly she changed the day visits to nights. During one of the visits, she told me, Now it is time for you to visit me. We stayed together that night, and at 8 a.m. the following day we took off. We joined a bus, and she told the driver to stop at the bar beach. As we stopped, I asked her, Where are we going? She said, Don't worry, you are going to know my house. She took me to a corner of the bar beach, used something like a belt, and tied it around us, and immediately a force came from behind and pushed us into the sea. We started flying on the surface of the water and straight to the ocean. Dear reader, these happened in my physical form. At a point, we sank into the seabed, and to my surprise, I saw us walking along an expressway. We moved into a city with a lot of people, all very busy. The Spirit World I saw laboratories like science labs, designing labs, and a theater. At the back of the city, I saw young beautiful girls and handsome young men. No old people. She introduced me to them, and I was welcomed. She took me to places like the dark room, the drying room, and the packing room. She then took me to a main factory and warehouse, and then came to her private mansion. There she sat me and told me, I am the queen of the coast, 
and would like very much to work with you. I promise to give you wealth, and all that goes with it, protection, and all that goes with it, life, and an angel to guide you. She pressed a button, and a tray came out with human flesh and pieces in it, and we ate together. She commanded a boa to appear and asked me to swallow it. I could not. She insisted, but I could not. How could I swallow a live boa? She then used her powers, and I swallowed it. These were three covenants. The human flesh and blood, the boa, and the demonic angel were always there to make sure no secret was revealed. But the angel was given power to discipline me if I went astray, and also to bring me food from the sea any time I was here on earth. I promised to obey her always. After this promise, she took me to another part of the ocean, this time an island. There were trees, and each of these trees had different duties. There was a tree for poisoning, a tree for killing, a tree for invoking, and a tree for a cure. She gave me powers to change to all kinds of sea animals, like hippopotamus, boa constrictor, and crocodile, and then she vanished. I stayed in the sea for a week, and through one of the means, as a crocodile, mentioned above, I came back to the world. The Underworld Laboratories I stayed in Lagos for a week and went back to the sea, this time for two months. I went into the scientific laboratories to see what was happening. I saw psychiatrists and scientists all working very seriously. The work of these scientists is to design beautiful things like flashy cars, the latest weapons, and to know the mystery of this world. If it were possible to know the pillar of the world, they could have, but thank God, only God knows. I moved into the designing room, and there I saw many samples of cloth, perfumes, and assorted types of cosmetic. All these things, according to Lucifer, are to distract men's attention from the Almighty God. I also saw different designs of electronics, computers, and alarms. There was also a TV from where they knew those who are born-again Christians in the world. There you see and differentiate those who are churchgoers and those who are real Christians. I then moved from the laboratories to the dark room and the drying room. The dark room is where they kill any disobedient member. They kill by first draining the person's blood, and then they send the person to the machine room, where he or she will be ground to powder, and then they send the dust to the sack room, where they will be bagged and kept for the native doctors to collect for their charms. There were more things which are hard to explain in writing. Despite all these powers in me, I was not yet qualified to meet with Lucifer, but only qualified to be his agent. All the same, I was satisfied that I now had powers and could face, challenge, and destroy things at will. Could there be any other powers anywhere I mused within my mind? After my graduation, I was promoted to California. Because the reason why I do that course is that I want to become Chief Justice in the highest court of the, of the Kingdom of Darkness. And truly, I pass all my exams and I become Chief Justice in the highest court of, of the darkness. And that was why I've been sent to California because California is the headquarters of the office of devil in the whole world. Devil have office in three places in the whole world. He have office in California. He have office in the Indian, and he have office in Nigeria also. He came. He, the office in Nigeria was established in 1977 by the first tax 77, the one that uh, uh, that that they brought this Nigeria by one of our presidents in those days and that first tax 77 we may talk it we may thought it's ordinary festival it's not ordinary festival it's it's, it's been programmed to establish to to initiate the whole power and the kingdom of darkness in nigeria establishment of the or uh, and the empowerment of darkness in nigeria and the office the secretariat is being situated in benin city the center of Oba Market Benin City, that is where the office is. And I pray God Almighty we come down in His infinite power and destroy the, the stronghold of darkness in Nigeria in Jesus' name. I proceed. When I when I when they promote me to California as a justice, this is a 30-year channel. And I was there as a justice. I have I have I have done many cases judge many saints condemn many souls i cannot explain much about that in this record but when i've been invited to church i explained it in details i've been there doing my work 
perfectly till one day I went to my chamber to go through files and I come across a file name on born persons. How can somebody that is not born have case? How can I judge person that has never come to this world before? I was so baffled. I don't know how to handle that case. I need to call on my registrar. I asked my registrar to give me details about this case. He cannot explain. He now sent for the, I now sent for the lawyer that bring the case. When I interviewed the lawyer, the lawyer now laughed. He said it's possible. They have been doing that in this court. That is possible for somebody that has not been born to this world to answer case in the kingdom of darkness. And I say how? How they come across such case? He now told me that they have astrologers. Me, I mean star browser. You know, before every man is being born to this world, your star will be on the sky at least 300 years or 400 years before you are being born to this world. So your star will be there waiting for you, programming you for, for, your, for your own generation that is coming. So there are some angels, fallen angels, they are browsing stars. These are the people we call astrologers of darkness. They read star three years to 300 years to come, 400 years to come. You see, when the star browser were going on in their work, they, might, they now come across a strange star, a strange star that, that being wrapped with the pillar of fire. And this star has been come across before for a long time. The star of Moses, before they born Moses, the kingdom of darkness noticed that somebody strange is coming. Because Moses have the angel that walk with the pillar of fire. If you go through the book of Exodus chapter 14, you will read it there because the pillar of fire walk with Moses. And this is why they wage war against Moses. They don't want him to succeed, but glory be to God that Moses make it at last. And when they discover this strange star again, they need to notice that person and mark it, mark that person. So therefore, they want to program against his life. That is why they brought the case. Not that he offended them now. They only want to program against his life. They just want authority from me so that I will declare what to do so that they will carry out the assignment. Okay. I say, but how are we going to do the case now? How are we going to see the person I want to judge. I cannot judge him in his absence. He now says it's very easy. They still have opportunity to take permission of somebody from heaven and bring him to their kingdom for judgment. I say I don't believe. He now told me that so far God can permit Job into the uh, into the hand of devil. They still have access. I thought it's a joke. I just give them dates. That so so dates will do the judge. But I don't know how to come about the case. I don't know the type of judgment I will, I will do. And the, the lawyer now told me that if I don't do the case, they will go and report me. So this thing now pushed me to go back to my library. I read very well. And later, I'm able to do the case. I, my decision is that I will get married. I will, I, I will arrange marriage for him. We reincarnate a demon. One of the demons will reincarnate that demon to be a woman. And we and that day in, in the court, I now bring the, 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 the demon reincarnate together with that man that appear. The baby appear as an adult man and we, we get them wedded. And surprisingly, when they are reading the data of that baby, they mention the name the baby will be on head, the name of the parents. I'm saying three or four hundred years to the time that that baby will be born. No, the parents are not yet born, the father are not yet born. But they mention the name, the location everywhere. All the data of the life is in their this case. They program everything contrary to the master plan of God. That is why I beseech you, all my listeners, if you discover your spiritual husband or spiritual wife, don't prove that you are too holy or you are born again from the infants. Just go straight for your deliver and pray, deliverance and pray, because. Many have been initiated or get married before they are born. So many people have been engaged before their mother even give birth to them. So don't argue. Go for deliverance. Everybody needs deliverance. So far you are this, you are in this world. This world has been polluted. You need deliverance every day. And I pray. Pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will purify you from every iniquity you are into in Jesus' name. As I was saying, 
after we do the case i've done another case many like that i finished my 30 years tenure in that kingdom and i got promoted to another kingdom and in that office before i got promoted to another kingdom and the kingdom they promote me to is being called anti-god kingdom there are three kingdoms controlling this world anti-god kingdom anti-christ kingdom and satanic kingdom and since the time of garden of Eden, it was the only first kingdom we have been we have been into till today the first kingdom that i call anti-god kingdom it started from the garden of Eden when the snake came to deceive Eve. You see, in this world, if anything happens, we normally mention the name of Satan, Satan, Satan. Either you believe me or not, Satan has never started his work. The person at work right now is name of Queen of Heaven. The same person the Bible talk about in the book of Genesis chapter 10. I'm talking about Semirami, the wife of Nimrod, the person that established uh, the Tower of Babylon, Babel, the person that the whole world that time are worshiping as a god. This is a person that caused Eve and Adam to go against God in the Garden of Adam. After God has saved some people so through Noah, is the same person that come back again and make them to build an, a tower against God and he has, is the one that gives them idea of idol worshipping again. And this person came again third time is a person called Jezebel at the same time. Anytime he came to this world, as he, we call him reincarnating, he is a demon and he will he will come in the shape of human being he will reincarnate to human being they will born her he normally come as a woman they will born her to this world if he has a powerful assignment that he wants to perform by himself by himself so this person i'm calling queen of heaven is one of the archangel superior than satan himself you know before satan was being descended to this world he was just an a, 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 a leader of choir kerubu the choir master in heaven if you go to the book of ezekiel 28 you will read it there you will see he's a choir master he's not one of the warriors angel so he still has some superior angel powerful than him but it's only when he want to perform when he want to plan the coup he go and he take the consent of the archangel they support him and they carry out the, uh, the coup and when they all lose the, the coup they all being cast away together with devil so devil still and satan still has some people that have power more than him so this queen of heaven have power more than satan himself so he's the one that started the ruling of this world so after his own kingdom then antichrist kingdom will come up then the satanic kingdom will come at last go back to your revelation you will discover all what i'm saying there so what i'm saying now is that in that kingdom when i get there they now introduce what they are doing to me they explain how they how they operate in their kingdom they told me that in their own kingdom they don't attack people they don't kill people anyhow they just they don't disturb people from prosperity they don't they don't give people barrenness the only assignment they have in their own kingdom the own the major work they do is to make man to serve God under the anger of God. What their major work is to to lead man to hellfire. They say they don't have fleet people on earth. It is other local, local, small, small kingdom that have fit people on earth. Maybe local level, federal level, national level. They say in their own level, they are the highest level. Their own is to to stand against in, uh, a man from making evil. I say how oh. they say they have their motto and their their power in the word of God. They say their motto is in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 8, and Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. I read 
5 8 you shall not make yourself you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water below you shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the lord your god am a jealous god punishing the children for the sin of their for of their father to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me when i add this thing i did not even it doesn't mean anything because we have read this in the school when i'm in the deep sea and i say how could that become power for you he now told me that they are they are fallen angel they have been dwelling with god for billions of years before the mistake they make and god descend them to this world they say they know the attitude of god they understand god very well they know that god will never we never admit or accept anybody that that worship another god anybody that worship another god must always be under the anger of god and if that person die they they are sure that the person will never see the favor of god so that is why they need to cause people to worship god under the anger of god he said that is why the idea of idol they don't joke with it they must make sure they cause people to bow down to the idol and then they know god for this that whenever he says something he doesn't reverse it he's a god that never changed so it is only when man repents then he will he will hold on and if man go back to sin all that sin he has forgiven him before when he go back to the sin they will reverse all those sin and couple it together with the one he commits new but when man repents he will and he did not go back to his sin he has overcome totally so therefore they now told me that in their kingdom they don't stop man not to go to church they don't stop man not to worship god but they only by own truth they don't use power they use wisdom they will program somebody's life to worship god under the anger of god they now told me it is from this they established many churches today and they told me they they they, they took me about deuteronomy 4 19. that 419 spoke about the about some churches and some religions also in verse 19 says and when you look up to the sky and see the sun the moon and the star all the heavenly array do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things the lord your god as a portion to all the nations under heaven he now told me that this is how they cause some religion whenever they want to worship god they will bow to the sun rise they will bow towards the sun he said they cause them to do that so that all their righteousness their faithfulness to god will be condemned because god will never accept them without a single thing say that is the only thing that will destroy them and the moment they die when they get to the gate of heaven this condition will be open against them and they told me that there are demons at the gate of heaven he said it is not on this earth the demon fight people say when they die after death they will still be there at the gate the way they stand against moses after death they will still stand for somebody after death in heaven to quote out those things that somebody did not walk did not discover on earth against somebody at the gate say this quotation they normally use it at the gate to against the saints those people they, they thought they are only on earth these are the things they use against them and i pray the lord god almighty will give us grace and wisdom to understand every secret system of darkness in the name of jesus christ so they now told me how they operate in the church they told me that this idol worshiping in the church this is how they brought it into the church after the death of christ in the uh, in, in the uh, among the israelites the apostles start, started their work again by going from one village to another city to another 
preaching the gospel, doing revival, doing healing. Anywhere they go, there will be power, there will be healing, there will be deliverance. And people started coming to Christ, following the apostles. And these people now say, how are we going to stop these people? They try to stop them by killing them. The more they kill them, the more they expand. Now when they now go to Rome, the land of Rome. They do their program there, they stay their program there. Many people got ill. Some people that are blind, that are lame, worshipping idols is all these days. Just one day program. Somebody that been lame for 30 years that I'm walking. A blind man for 20 years that I can see. Somebody that is doctor can talk. And you, you know, youth, they always they, they are very sharp. They quickly understand things. Youth now came to the, those apostles. After after the uh, apostle Paul and Peter has left that place. They will put some people there to be working as a pastor and evangelist. So they now established church in Rome. So after the senior apostle has left, the youth now came to the one, the, those people they put there and say, Sir, if you want us to join your church, there's a way you can bring us in. If you can allow us to bring our idol into this church, then we become your member. Because if our fathers know that we forsake their idol, and they see us going to church, they will curse us and kill us. If you want us to join your church to be worshipping your God, just allow us to bring our idol into your church, just to disguise our fathers. And then we'll come in and worship your God. When we are going to go out, we we'll just bow to the idol, and our father will thought we are worshipping the same idol. But the apostle says, we cannot do that if we should do this, and Paul came back, or Peter, and see us doing this, they will cost us. You now say, okay, there's a way we can do it. We can change the name of that idol. The idol they are worshipping in the land of Egypt, in the land of Rome that time, the name is Venus. When I'm talking about Venus, I'm talking about Queen of Heaven. The same idol the Israelites worship in the land of Canaan called Asherah. is the same idol the Roman are calling Phenos. It's the same idol the Chinese are, are calling Ching Moon. The Indians are calling it Indrane. The Greeks, the Greeks call her Aphostidas or Seri. So Maria call her Nana. The Romans call her Phenos. Asia country call her Sibele. Egyptia call her Horus or Isis. The Ephesians call her Diana. And Babylonia, Babylon call her Baleti. The English people call her My Lady. Italia call her Madonna. The Latin call her Domina. This, this, this same person I'm talking about, the, uh, the Scandinavia call her Disa. Etrosia call her Nitoria. So this, this is how they worship her in many countries. He normally appear as an image of woman or mother and child. This same person is a person they brought into that church and they say they will change our name. That is why I need to warn you here, please be careful the name you use in prayer. Any name you use, if you like, you call Holy Michael when you pray. If you like, you call Holy Gabriel, even though you pray in the name of Holy Mary. It is the holy name of Jesus Christ God has given unto us. He said, he has exalted this name above every other name. By the name of Jesus Christ, every name shall bow. Any other name you used to pray behind the name of Jesus Christ, you are praying to Queen of Heaven. I did not mention any name of any church now. But please, praying by any other name apart from the name of Jesus Christ is a sin. So therefore, in this name, they pray in the name of the mother of Jesus, this and that. So this is how they bring this thing into the church and they call her some holy name to pray to God. But the genuine name of that idol is Phenos, the one they about, the one they brought into the church in the land of Rome. So they say by this they have power to cause people to worship God under the anger of God. So after their own service on earth, when they die, when they get to the gate of heaven, they will just cut this quotation. And it will be impossible for them to make heaven because if heaven and earth pass away the list of the word of god will never go unfulfilled these are the area this quotation condemn billions of souls after their deaths so please if you are one of the people
praying by any other name apart from the name of Jesus Christ, you are already against the word of God. Go back to the Bible. Forget about the doctrine of your church. Go back to the doctrine of Bible. Bible can never deceive you. Any doctrine of the church can deceive you. May God bless you as you make your correction. That is how they take me back to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. This Deuteronomy 4, 19 is talking about uh, another religion also. They told me, I say, how do they work on this one? They say they call some people whenever they want to serve God, they bow their head to the sun and they pray and they told me that they purposely use this thing against them and according to the uh, that chapter chapter 4 verse 19 he said when you look up to heaven you see the it is the sun the moon and the heavenly uh, heavenly array do not bow down to them or do not allow them to entice you to worship them so therefore if anybody now go against that quotation but bow down to anything at all they get to heaven they will also condemn them that is why you see some religion bowing down to the sun i did not mention any any religion name but if you're a bible scholar you will read it there deuteronomy 4 19 so in any way you worship god by bowing down to any image or anything god created you have committed a sin even though this bow down to the sun this is right from the Bible in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8. When you read from verse 16, Ezekiel 8 16, you will get the whole thing there. He talk about, let me read it out for you. He said, Son of man, he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and there are the entrance to the temple between the portico and the altar where about 25 men which their back towards the temple of the lord and their face towards the heat they were bound down to the sun in the east he said to me have you seen this son of man it is a tribal matter for the house of judah to do this terrible this terrible thing they are doing here must they also fill the land with violence and continually provoke me to anger look at them putting the branch to their nose therefore i will deal with them in anger i will not look on them with pity or spear them although they shout in my ear i will not listen to them you may be reading this quotation for a long time you may not know this thing is talking about some religion you see god's they did they performed this thing in the house that solomon built if you read very well you understand it they, they, they this religion started from the temple of solomon there are 25 people that started this religion it is not only one man they shout up and down that man is not the is not the founder of that religion it is these 25 men that started that religion and the name of that court is 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 well known but i will not mention the name of that court in this case so these are the 25 men spread that religion by bow down to the sun and the bible the god say in this verse that he will he will never have mercy on them he will and he will, he will, he, his anger is arose upon them even though they shout louder in his ear he will not listen to them that means god is not pleased with the way they watch it and these people are really trying please if you are under this thing i'm not against you but I'm reading Bible now. Even though you don't believe me, believe the Bible. Even though you see me as a liar, believe the word of God. Because I will die, you will die, but the word of God will never die. Please and please. I'm not saying I'm wiser than you. But even though my experience in the kingdom of darkness is a lie, what about the Bible? Even the book of John 16, if you read from verse 1, he talk about it. You see, a time is coming when they, they will enter into synagogue, they will drive you out. Even a time is coming when some people will kill you, they will believe they are worshipping God. They will kill you and they will think they are fighting for God. Bible talk much about these people. So please, beware. No man can fight for God. God knows how to fight for himself. So therefore, please and please, 
If truly you believe Bible, read and make correction in Bible because we are all doing religion. Nobody know the best. It is only God that know the best. And it's only that God that know the best that write this thing by his spirit. He direct people and make them to write. If truly you believe Bible, you must believe this word. So this they now explain to me that in their kingdom, this is what they are doing. They cause people, they deceive them to worship God under the anger of God so that they can use the same thing to condemn them after their death. So they now told me that as I enter this kingdom, what they want to use me for is to be using me to establish a temple all over. I mean the shrine for worshiping idol. So they trained me for this for some years and started coming to this world. They will, they will, they will burn me. Somebody will burn me. I will grow. After some years, I will die. I don't die premature. At times, I die at the age of 70, 80. I will grow. I will have a wife. I will born children. But my main purpose in that country is to live with them, to know their, their, what they like, what they hate, their waking points, and I know how to arrange God for them. And this is how we establish our idols. If you want to establish, we live among them, we know their waking points, their sickness, everything. So if you want to force a state or a city to worship a new idol that we brought, we will cause sickness. Among them is that they will be dying, terrible sickness, or we can, we can send the spirit of Gog or Magog to another country or another village to come and fight them, killing them. And when there's something dangerous, when they see people dying, they started going out up and down, consulting Oracle. So from this consulting, they will now tell them that they should go to so person. He has the solution of their problem. They will now direct them to me. And I will now tell them that until this, they establish so so thing, watching so so idol, their problem will be over. And truly, if I give them the idea, they will open that, they will establish that thing, they will build it for me. And when they build it, we tell them to start worshiping. And when they worship, their problem will be over truly. And this is how they will turn it to God. I've been born in many countries. As a Christian, you may be arguing with me that it's been mandated to a man to die once. And after that, judgment. True, the Bible did not die. The Bible did not lie. It is true that man is being mandated to die once. But let me tell you something. After death, if you are not a good child of God, it is only if you are a good child of God. If you die, if you have Holy Spirit when you die, then there's an angel called Escort Angel. They will come and um, they will come and welcome you. They will take your soul and protect you to a place for that soul to rest. But if you don't have Holy Spirit, Either you believe me or not. There are some demons available waiting for you to give up. They will hijack your soul and take you to their kingdom. Do you know that many of us, we did not reach our age before you die. The only thing that can make you to go to the land of death is when you die at the appropriate age. But if you dare die before your age, you are not going there. You will go to another kingdom to start serving there. Even though you don't believe me, if you, are in, if you are in Nigeria, especially Yoruba, Yoruba know what we call Abiku. Some people, somebody will die now. And uh, under some months, you will see, as he died, they will cut the hand, the leg. If they, if they burn that person again, that place they cut, the mark will be there. If they cut the face, as they burn that person again, the mark will be there. And some of them, even though when they burn them again, they will still have the memory of how they burned them last time. The former cloth they are using, when they see it, they will say, yeah, this is my cloth. The former shoe they are using before they die, when they say, they say, this is my shoe. You yourself will know that this is a child that died before they come back. Many people, as they are listening to me now, they can testify to it. If you argue, others will not argue. God has given devil this power. He doesn't drag it with him because he has suited a date for judgment. Anything you like, you can do on it. You can keep people, you can destroy. But the day is coming that every destroyer shall be destroyed. So it is you, your life as a child of God, that God is targeting. That is why God sent his son to come and die for us. If God wants to destroy the devil, he will not even send 
Jesus Christ to come and solve her. He is the creator he can destroy, but he has programmed it. He has time for it. So that is why he gives us grace for life and death. You need to choose the one you like by yourself. There's also a man in the Bible that God gives grace to come back the second time. I'm talking about John the Baptist. If you go to the book of Matthew, you will see there, Matthew 11, when you read from, from verse 14, he say, and if you are willing to accept, to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He's talking about John Baptist there. So God also gives John Baptist, I mean Elijah, opportunities to come back the second time. I'm not preaching reincarnation now, but I'm telling you how I come about going and coming. And devil can perform any miracle. It's not moving God. The greatest miracle that devil is not expecting is, uh, is destruction, mass destruction of, of heaven and earth by the anger of God. It's not even miracle to devil self. He knows that he's coming. He knows he himself is preparing himself, his host, and every being on earth. That is why you need to single yourself out by the, by, by the grace of God and live a holy life. So therefore, I mean, I've been in this kingdom working for them from one country to another. And this is how we penetrate into woman being. My meeting with Satan. I later went back to Lagos. One day, a girl named Nina came to me. Nina, whose parents were from Anambra State, was a very beautiful young girl, but lives mostly in the sea, i.e. the underwater spirit world. She was an ardent agent of the Queen of the Coast, and very wicked. She hated the Christians to the core, and would go all lengths to fight Christianity. I first met her during my visit to the sea. Nina came for an errand from the Queen of the Coast. We left immediately, and reaching there I learnt of our having a conference with Lucifer. Satan, in this meeting, gave us the following instructions. To fight the believers, and not the unbelievers, because the unbelievers were already his. When he said this, one of us asked, Why? He said the reason was that God drove him out of that place. He refused to call the word heaven, and all throughout our meetings with him he never mentioned the word heaven. Rather, he would always use the word that place because of pride, and therefore he does not want any Christian to get there, heaven. He also told us that we should not fight the hypocrites. They are like me, he said. He continued his speech and said, We should only fight the real Christians. That his time was near, therefore we should fight as never before, and make sure no one enters that place. So one of us said to him, We heard that God has sent someone to rescue mankind back to God. Satan then asked, Who is that? One member answered, Jesus. And to our greatest surprise, Lucifer fell from his seat. He shouted at the man and warned him never to mention that name in any of our meetings if he loves his life. It is true that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Philippians 2, 10, including Satan. After this incident, he encouraged us and told us not to mind these Christians, that he, Lucifer, would soon come to rule the world and would give us, his agents, a better place so that we would not suffer with the rest of the world and he would make us rulers. He continued that since man likes flashy and fanciful things, he would continue to manufacture these things and make sure that man has no time for his God and that he would use the following to destroy the church. Number one, money. Number two, wealth. Number three, women. At the end of this speech, he dismissed the meeting. This was my first meeting with Satan. Several others followed after this meeting. As we were leaving, the queen of the coast, who now appears in different forms, invited me to her mansion. She inserted human ashes with other things inside the bones of my two legs, a stone, not an ordinary stone, in my finger, and something else inside the bone of my right hand. Each of these things had their duties. The stone in my finger was to know the thought of anyone against me. The one in my right hand was to empower me to destroy, and the ones in the legs are to make me more hardened and to become more dangerous, and also to enable me to change to a woman, a beast, a bird, a cat, etc. She took me to one of the laboratories and gave me a telescope, a TV, and a video. These were not ordinary things, but were to be used in detecting the born-again Christians and the churchgoers inside the church. Finally, she gave me sixteen girls to work as my agents. Nina was one of them. I came back to Lagos armed with the above-mentioned gifts transformed into Satan's agent. I had no human feelings nor mercy in my heart any longer. 
I went into operation immediately and destroyed five duplexes at a go. They all sunk inside the ground with their inhabitants. This happened at Lagos in August 1982. The contractor was held responsible for not laying a good foundation and paid dearly for it. A lot of destruction happening in the world today is not man-made. The devil's duty is to steal, kill, and destroy. I say it again, Satan has no free gift. I went into causing accidents on the roads, etc. A case I would like to mention is about a young convert who went about testifying of his salvation and deliverance. He was causing a lot of harm in the spirit world for doing this, so I planned an accident for him. One day he was on a luxurious bus to Lagos. He had an appointment where he was to give his testimony. As the bus was on high speed, I wheeled it out of the road, and it went and crashed onto a tree. All the passengers died except this young convert. His escape was miraculous, because he came out of the vehicle through the boot of the bus and shouted, I am safe, I am safe. We tried to stop him from testifying, but we failed. Through the TV, we would know a man who repented newly and would pursue him seriously to see if we could make him backslide. If, after six months, we do not succeed, we would go into his business and make it go bankrupt. If he or she is a civil servant, we would oppress him or her through the boss and, if possible, make the boss terminate his or her appointment. If, after all these, he refuses to backslide, then we would give him up. But if he backslides, he would be killed to make sure he does not have a second chance to repent. I destroyed lives to the extent that Lucifer became very pleased and made me chairman of the wizards. A month after my chairmanship, a meeting was called. We attended that meeting as birds, cats, and snakes. These creatures are used for the following reasons. Number one, turning to birds makes wizards more dangerous. Number two, turning to cats makes wizards able to reach both spirits and humans. Number three, turning to rats enables wizards to enter into a house easily, then in the night turn to shadow, and then to a human being and suck the victim's blood. In this meeting we had only one item on the agenda, the Christians. We then scheduled to hold an African wizard conference in Benin City in 1983. We published it in all the dailies and all the public media. All the forces of darkness were mobilized, and we were very confident that nothing was going to interrupt this meeting. In fact, everything was well planned, and there was no loophole. Suddenly, the Christians in Nigeria went into prayers and praises unto their God, and all our plans were shattered. Not only that our plans were shattered, but also there was real confusion in the kingdom of darkness. As a result, the Witches and Wizards Conference could not be held in Nigeria. Christians should note that the moment they go into real praises to God Almighty, there would be trouble and confusion both in the sea and in the air, and the agents of Satan would have no resting place. Prayer is like throwing a time bomb in our midst, and everyone would escape for his or her life. If Christians would realize and use the power and authority God has given them, they would control the affairs of their nation. Only Christians can save our nation. After the failure of this conference, which was later held in South Africa, I was called back to the sea. When I arrived, I was told from that moment I would make the sea my home and only visit the world for difficult operations. I was given a new assignment, inventing charms for native doctors, in charge of the controlling room, and sending the gifts, i.e. opening of white garment churches or prayer houses, opening of maternities, opening stores, and making them prosper, and giving children and money. These will be explained one after the other. Number 1. Opening of White Garment Churches When a man comes to us for an assistance to build a prayer house and help him perform healings, etc., he would be given some conditions. A. He will agree to donate to us one or two souls every year. B. At a certain level of office in the church, the person would be initiated to our society. C. No member would be allowed to come into the prayer house with shoes on. When he accepts these conditions, he would be given something like white gravel, human bones, blood and charms, all in a native pot. He would be instructed to bury this pot with all its content in front of the church and bury the cross on its top. After the burial, only the cross should be seen. He would be advised to build a pool or keep a basin where spirits would continue to supply special water. This water is what you hear them call holy water. Many people, when disturbed by evil spirits, go to these prophets to cast them out. The truth is, they only add more demons to them. A devil cannot cast out a devil. 
What the prophet would do is, he will pray for the member, and then give him or her a red cloth to put in his or her house, and then would advise him or her to always pray with candles and incenses. By this act, the person invites us into his or her house. Sometimes the member would be advised to bring a goat, etc., for sacrifice. These sacrifices are for us to come and help cure the man. The prophet has no power to cure or heal. Number 2. Opening of Maternities If a woman comes to us for assistance in opening a maternity and making it prosper, she would be given this condition. A month would be chosen by us in which all the children born in the maternity would die, but the other months the children would live. If she accepts, she would also be given a charm which would attract people into the maternity. There are such maternities in Onitsha, Lagos, etc. Shoes are not allowed into such maternities. Number 3. Opening of Fancy Stores When a man approaches us for assistance in this respect, he would be given a ring with the condition that no woman would be allowed to touch it. He also must agree to be our member. If he accepts to fulfill these conditions, his store would be stocked always with the best and latest materials by us. Number 4. Giving of Children if a barren woman goes to some native doctors after laying her complaints, she would be asked to bring the following, a white cock, a goat, native chalk, and baby care. She would be advised to go, and in her absence the native doctor will come to us bringing these things. We would then mix certain things which are difficult to explain in writing, and include human ashes. He would use this charm to cook food for the woman. She would become pregnant and give birth, but it's not a normal human being. If the child is a female, she would live and even get married, but would remain barren all her life. If the child is a male, he will live and even be trained, only to die suddenly. They never live to bury their parents. I would like to mention here that barrenness is mostly caused by demons. You may see a woman barren here on earth, but she would have children in the sea. I therefore advise God's children to wait on God alone, because only God gives real children. Number 5. Giving of Money If a man comes to us for money, he would be given these conditions to fulfill. He will be asked to give a part of his body, or if he has a family, he would be asked to bring his son. If single, he would be asked to bring his elder or younger brother. Whoever he decides to bring must be from the same womb. Something worth mentioning is, during the killing of the victim, the person who brought him would be given a spear or an arrow. His relations would be made to file past in a mirror. As soon as the one he had donated passes, he would be asked to strike, and as this happens, the victim would die where he is. There are other methods, but one thing Satan does is this. He makes sure that in the different methods, the donor becomes responsible for the death of the victim by making the donor strike the victim. Remember, Satan has no free gift. Chapter 4 How Satan Fights Christians for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 10-12 Fighting Christians After the command by Lucifer to fight the Christians, we then sat and mapped out ways of fighting them as follows. Number 1. Causing sickness. Number 2. Causing barrenness. Number 3. Causing slumber in the church. Number 4. Causing confusion in the church. Number 5. Causing lukewarmness in the church. Number 6. Making them ignorant of the word of God. Number 7. By fashion and emulation. Number 8. Fighting them physically. Amongst the above, I would like to explain two. Number 1. Fighting physically. With the TV given to me, I would see the born-again Christians. We do not fight hypocrites because they belong to us already. We would then send our girls first to the big churches. Inside the church, they would be chewing gum or making a child cry or do anything that would distract the people from hearing the word of God. They may decide to come spiritually and cause the people to sleep while the preaching is going on. The moment they see you have a sober reflection because of the preaching, they would wait on you outside the church, and as you come out, one of them would greet you and even present you a gift, and it's always what you love, and would appear very friendly. She would do everything, and before you knew what was happening, you had forgotten all you learned in the church. But for a real Christian, one of these girls, after the service, would jump out to greet you and would desire to know your house with the pretext that she was new in town and did not know many Christians around. On taking her home, 
She would quickly buy bananas, and the Christian would take this as a gesture of love. She would continue her visits until she finally puts off the light of Christ in you, and then stops coming. Major operations in the living churches and fellowships are discouraging the Christians from reading and studying the Word of God, and thereby making them ignorant of their authority and of the promises of God. In crusade grounds, these girls would be sent to cause disagreements and quarrels. How Christians are known The born-again Christians are not known by the Bible they carry always, or the many fellowships they attend. They are known in the spirit world by the light that shines continuously like a very bright candle in the heart or a circle of light around the head, or a wall of fire around them. When a Christian is walking along, we see angels walking along with him or her, one by the right, one by the left, and one behind. This makes it impossible for us to come near him or her. The only way we succeed is by making the Christian sin, thereby giving us a loophole to come in. When a Christian is driving a car and we want to harm him or her, we find that he or she is never alone in the car. There is always an angel by him or her. Oh, if the Christian only knows all that God has for him, he will not meddle with sin or live carelessly. Number 2. The Making of Backslidden Christians as a chairman appointed by Lucifer, I would send these girls to living churches and fellowships. These girls would be well dressed, and after the preaching would come out for the altar call, pretend to have received Christ, and would be prayed for. At the end of the fellowship or service, they would hang around waiting for the preacher, who naturally would be very happy for these new converts. The converts may even follow the preacher to his house. If the preacher does not have the spirit of discernment, she would lure him into the sin of fornication or adultery. This takes place the moment he admires her lustfully. She would make sure he continued in this sin until she finally quenches the Spirit of God in him, and then leave him, mission accomplished. At this juncture, I would like to give a testimony of a minister. In the evil spirit world, he is known as a man of God. When he went on his knees, there would be confusion among us. We therefore sent these girls to him. The man would even feed them, but would refuse to be enticed. They did all they could, but never succeeded. As a result, these girls were killed for their failure. I then changed into a woman and went to him, and by words and actions tried to entice him, but he was adamant. This was too much for me, so I decided to kill him physically. One day, this minister went to Odewekpe Road, Market Town. I watched him as he bent down to price some commodities. I wheeled an oncoming trailer loaded with drums of oil into the market where he was. The trailer struck the Nepa high tension pole and fell right into the market, leaving many people dead. But this minister escaped. How he escaped was a miracle. Another day I saw him traveling to the town of Nikpur on foot. I again wheeled an oncoming army lorry loaded with yams to kill him. The lorry went straight into the new cemetery road, killed many people. But this minister again escaped. After this second attempt we gave up. He is still alive. Because of a single Christian, the devil may decide to destroy many souls, thinking he could kill him, but he always fails. These incidents had happened to many Christians unknown to them, but their God always delivered them. The trouble is, the devil does not give up. His thoughts are always, I may succeed. But he never does. As long as the Christian walks with God's love and remains in him and does not get entangled with the affairs of this life, the devil can never succeed no matter how hard he tries. Only the unbeliever is at his disposal. The Oppression of the Christian This mostly happens in dreams. A Christian may see, in his or her dreams, the following. Number one, a dead relation visiting him or her. Number two, masquerades pursuing him or her. Number three, mates swimming in the river. Number four, mates bringing food and asking him or her to eat. Number five, a single female having sexual intercourse or even a married one having sex with a man. This, if not dealt with, sometimes leads to barrenness. Or a pregnant woman sees herself having sexual intercourse with a man. This, if not immediately dealt with, could lead to a miscarriage. If a Christian experiences the above in his or her dreams, he or she should not put it aside by the wave of the hand, but on getting out of sleep, he or she should examine himself or herself and confess any known sin unto God, bind all those demons, and ask God to restore whatever had been tempered with. This is very important. The person should also seek the help and counsel of a mature, spirit-filled Christian, older in the faith. The Devil's Soul Winning 
When Jesus Christ was leaving this earth, he gave his disciples a command, Go ye into all the world, and make disciples of all nations. While some Christians are still waiting for a more suitable and convenient time to obey this command, the devil has also given this command to his agents. The difference is, the devil's agents are more serious in winning souls than the Christians. One of the areas of the devil's soul winning is the secondary schools, especially girls' schools. Some of our girls are sent into the schools as students. We supply them with all the latest and expensive underwear. This is first priority, because in girls' hostels, they like using underwear only. Our agent would never lack anything, cosmetics, dresses, underwear, books, provisions, and money. A particular bathing soap would be given to her to lend to any student who requests for soap from her. A girl desiring to be like her would be attracted and would befriend her. Gradually, our agent would introduce us to her. At this point, we would visit her physically and would start giving her gifts and meeting her needs. With this, she would join us willingly. She, in turn, would win another, and so on. This is taken as a mission, and it is carried out with a determination to succeed. One thing should be made clear. Satan does not force anyone. What he does is to attract and make you come to him willingly. That is why the Bible says, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7 Another area of soul winning for the devil is giving lifts. We would send our girls to stand on the road, and usually they are very beautiful and attractively dressed. You will also find them in hotels, and through these avenues we get men and women. Many people we see advertised in the papers as missing got lost through giving lifts to girls they did not know. You should therefore be careful who you lift in your car. So that is how I started going from one country to another and establishing temple up and down. This is how I worked with this country kingdom for many years until I, I started having promotion anywhere they bomb me I will have prom I will proper there any assignment given to me any contract I'm so good I pros prosper in all things given to me then I started having promotion promotion until I get one rack to another and I get to the higher level to extend I become one of the executive member of the kingdom of darkness in superior realm so this executive I'm talking about we, we normally go for an annual meeting. I mean, in that meeting, we do annual budget and annual report. So, and this budget is always come up around this, uh, around uh, September, October. You know, in the world, we normally do budgets maybe early of the year. But in the kingdom of darkness, is the towards ending of the year, we normally do it. So, this year, I'm talking about, we went to the uh, annual meeting where we give annual report and every year when we give the report you see each one of us in that meeting each person represents a continent one person will represent africa one person will represent asia or one person will represent Europe. so that is how so we are we are not that many but we are executive so somebody can stand up and say in my own continent ah uh, it is two million people that died this year it is uh, 700 people that, that, that we are afflicted with sickness. This year, it is uh, 300 people that backslide. This year, uh, some, uh, 400 people will give them fibroid. This year, so they will just be giving report of the bad things, the havoc things they have done. So, as they work, so their promotion, their power, some people, when they want to give them, they will add more demons to their demons they can give some people another additional twenty thousand demons to be working with them so that their work will be effective very well some they will give them some power snake scorpion many of many weapon arrows so that their work can be faster and they will also give report of those people that got initiated in a year let me tell you something in a local government if you have 10 winch in a local government either you believe it or not under a year, that ten winch must be must be multiplied to hundred, because in the kingdom of darkness now, the system is that they must initiate multiplication. It is Christian that we don't care about multiplication, but in the kingdom of darkness, multiplication is the most powerful assignment because devil used to tell them every year that 
rapture will soon take place they don't want just Christ to have any candidates they want the rapture to sound and they don't want anybody to rapture they want just Christ to score a zero so that, that's why they are very fast in initiating people in the olden days before they initiate you you will go to their meeting they will tell you to bring this they will tell you to do this they will tell you to make covenant to do this but now either you like it or not you must be initiated either by dream or in the school that is why i'm going to tell you how they initiate people so it is only by the grace of god you can be safe because even things you buy in the market i will tell you how they initiate people so they will tell the number of the people they initiated and then after the whole thing the person can be promoted this is how we started giving our report one by one but the last people that normally give report they are the people called international demons these are the people that normally stay in the middle of heaven and earth at the entrance gate these are the people that know how many people that go to hell in a year and how many people that go to heaven in a year
but this year that year is very very different and that day the whole place was scattered everybody was angry devil himself cry roar like a lion with anger scattered everywhere injure many people release fire bomb many people say why do you want to destroy my kingdom do you want to do you, do you want do you want to destroy me how should you allow 15 people to make heaven in a year it's dangerous you people started making heaven like this every year that mean rapture will quickly take place don't you know that because there's no people to sit on this seat that is why rapture is still delayed so if the number quickly complete then our time will be over so he was annoyed he now summoned their soldiers they should go and browse and they should go into the internet let me tell you something about this internet you see internet this internet has been existing for long for long it is late our day before you people on earth discover what we call internet this website has been there even before the time before the time of garden uh, Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden because these people their intellectual their their intellectual is very very wide more than us so and in other series I will I will define what we call computer for you you will know the meaning of computer so if you if you are proud that you are the you are in computer age you are joking that means you are in antichrist age and anyone that his name is not written in the book of life will be cast, and cast into the hell fire. Let me tell you something. The name of Aido, Ogundare, Shangobi, or Sun, he can never enter into the book of life. Forget about your position in Christian view. Either you are a bishop, you are reverend, you are whatever you think you are. If your name needs to do with Aido, you may be holy on earth. Your work may be acceptable, but your name will not be called in the book of life. And you can never enter there with your holiness if your name is not called. He, that is why God needs to change the name of Abraham. He changed the name of Sarah. And he also changed the name of Jacob. If Baria is not a name, God will not change this name. So your name needs to be changed if truly you are born again. Let all things pass away. Be a name with God. Don't be a name with the, with idol. He said, if you people who bear my name can change your mind can humble yourself can forsake your sin bible talk about that so if so if truly you want to make heaven make sure your name needs to do with god if your name collide with idol that means you belong to the knowledge of idol so therefore note that make correction on your names so if you want to attack people to kill them in the kingdom of darkness we go through that name you see, everybody, that second demon, that, that second angel that comes from the fire, he can write anybody's name. Maybe your name is Shongobiyo, your name is Senta, Senta Devil, whatever your name is, he will write it down. He will go and record it in their registrar room in air fire. So if you are alive, you are, if you are committing sins, the blood of your Christ will not be on your name. But if you are holy man, you are in Christ, blood of your Christ will cover your name. When the demons come there to read, your name will be blank. They will not see it. But the moment you backslide, you go back to sin. The name will wipe. The blood will wipe away, and the name will appear. So if the name appear, if you go there, we can quickly struck that person to death before he repents. We will not allow him to repent before we kill him. But when we get there, we see that blood still cover that name. No matter how great is the is he uh, is our program upon that person we will not kill that person that moment until we see him in the act of sin before we can kill him or else if you kill him without this mark without wiping away the blood of jesus christ he will go to heaven and we lose the candidate and the kingdom of darkness they will punish us for losing the candidate so in our own in our own, in our own kingdom killing is not our target but destruction to hell fire is in our target so that is what I want to go and do in air fire that day. I want to go and check a name. I now decided to branch to the international demon to greet them in their position. As I was exchanging war with them, I now heard a noise, strange noise, shouting like with joy. As I now asked them, What's the meaning of the, what is the meaning of this noise? They told me that oh, it is from the palace of the great God Almighty. I said, What happened? They say there's visitor. Whenever they have visitor, that is how they rejoice. That is where coming uh, sound. Ah. That in you know, pains me, it baffles me because I don't believe people are still making heaven. How manage? 
upon the old trap we set in this world we don't believe people can still make heaven because everything on earth we have we have we have polluted everything we believe it's not easy for anybody to make heaven again so this now bother me and i will wait i determine that i will wait and i will see that person how the person we we enter through the gates as we are there waiting truly the person started getting closer getting closer when it gets to the gate we discover that it's ordinary woman yeah because it is easy for man to make heaven than a woman women are very very scarce in heaven I remember when God took when Jesus Christ took me to heaven when she met, when he met me when Jesus Christ took me to heaven when he took me to the banquet hall I discover that men are more than women in the church on earth women are much but in heaven women are very very scarce because of what the devil has programmed for them I will tell I will talk about that later what cast what make women not make heaven I will talk about that so in this case, was that I watching this woman? When it gets to the gates, they were the angel of God welcome this woman so much. They welcome her. Suddenly, I saw the angel. They brought out an a, a, a crown, very glorious crown, filled with star all over. There's no space in that crown, shining more than 500 stars. I say, what is this? Why is this? Star, uh, is this crown so glorious like this? You now told me that she's a she's a woman of God. She's a wife of a pastor. She's a preacher. He say that is the crown of soul winner. He say it is not. There's no crown for pastor or bishop or reverend here. Any title we give to ourselves on earth has no crown or reward here. It is only the work we do that they, they can take a reward here. He say this is a crown for. Is so winner. You see, that star I saw on the crown is the number of the soul, souls that the woman won to heaven. Ah, it pains me so much. But to my surprise, as they are welcoming this woman during the welcoming process, they brought out his garments, his gown, full, very glorious garments. They did not open the gate for her. They brought out his uh, uh, throne. Glorious also, they come and see very great estates built for this woman. He appear on the screen. We saw the mighty estate only for our own kingdom. Come and see thousands of angels assigned to be serving her in her kingdom. All these things are brought out, but they refuse to open gate for this woman. And this woman started thinking in her mind. You know, in that place, you don't need to talk. As you think, anything you have, any thought you have in your mind, we appear on the screen. So you don't need to, you cannot have bad thoughts in that place. So as this woman was thinking in her mind that, oh, oh let this be open for me, Jari. Because as she looked back, she saw the giant uh, demons behind him. She was afraid of those demons. So she was in haste to enter. And uh, as she's having that thought, the angel of God, they now saw what is written in her heart. They now say, sorry, woman, you cannot enter into this place because the Bible says, no iniquity shall enter into the kingdom of God. And the woman said, what? What did you mean? Because she's sure of her life. She believed that she lived an holy life and truly she lived an holy life. Because in her garment, there's no spot there. Everything is clean. But the angel said, she cannot enter. And this must have argued, no, I must enter. Just Christ even appear to me before i die i am holy i'm this and that but on the present when she was arguing the international demon down now interrupts they say woman you cannot enter according to the book of ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19 to 21 okay let me read for you ezekiel chapter 7 from verse 19 to 21 i read he said they will throw their sliver into the street, and their gold will be an unclean thing. Their sliver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their wrath, their hunger, or fill their stomach with it, for it has made them to stumble into sin. They will are proud of their beautiful jewelries and use it to make their decidable idol. So so that and 
and to make their disabled idol and vile image therefore i will turn this into an unclean things for them i will hand it over as a plunder to the foreigner and the, and as a loot to the wicked of the earth and they will devile it can you see this this is the quotation they gave this woman you may not understand this quotation as they gave this woman this quotation immediately this woman remember they are talking about jewelries and this woman touched her hair and she have just a little earring she believed that at least if your dressing is moderate it's not a sin that is what she believed according to the book of uh, peter so she believed it's a little one but they told her that this thing cannot make heaven before she started saying i'm sorry i don't know before she started tendering her explanation immediately there's a force that came from nowhere that force just just turned this woman face she backed the gate of heaven and faced towards the air fire and the speed took this woman running seriously look don't think you will walk majestically to air fire or somebody will throw you you will run with your leg speed and the worst part is this this woman started shouting the name of jesus christ she was shouting jesus as she was shouting jesus that is how she ran to hellfire with the name of jesus christ in his mouth look if you are in the church they tell you to shout the name of jesus christ you don't want you don't know you don't you wouldn't want to shout louder don't worry if you continue a life of sin you will shout the name of jesus christ for eternity in hellfire and no salvation it is when you are still alive you can shout the name of jesus christ to salvation so please whatever the bible prove wrong let just accept it like that you see this woman go to hellfire because of the ignorant she doesn't know that god go against dressing with earring and shame she doesn't know she only follow all other things in the bible don't do this don't do this she obey but this one particularly she doesn't believe god did not like did not like it and if you are there asking me where did god write it in the bible that we should not use earring or shame i will prove it to you now let's let me start from this you know jewelries all this ornament we put on god did not create it for fashion did you know from the beginning god did not create cement for us as a building materials before god caused the land before god caused adam and eve when god be created man on the sixth day god created us as an emo, emo uh, 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 that we are we are uh, immortality that we, we will not die we have immortality we will not die but since we commit sin we turn to mortal man we can die it was when god caused us he then caused the land before he caused us because he has created us that we are going to live forever he has produced he has created a building materials under the ground that we'll be using to build our house that will remain forever so that is why god created gold gold is being created as a building materials you see in the kingdom of darkness they know the geology of this world because they are there where god created it they know what god created everything for they know the reason why god created it because they are there it is their present god created everything so they know that gold is being created by god as a building material so that it can be forever it will not fall it will not break it will not crack so when god now calls the land it is when god calls the land all the demons they know we are under the anger of god they know the presence of god is departed from us they know the glory of god is departed from us so they now quickly come down pack all the treasure that god has created for us they go and hide it in the places that is why they pack that's why you see before we can have our treasure our crude oil everything all those engineers they used to appeal to those demons and everything you see this gold is a building material there's no cement in the beginning it is when they pack all those things they now remit with replace with cement and when we use cement to build the house later after 100 years you see this house cracking falling breaking so 
this gold from the beginning got created gold as a building materials not as a fashion or the, this thing we are using it for these days it is idea of demons that make us to be using it the way we are using it i'm coming before the israelites using uh, their jewelries to make idol let me go to the time of jacob if you see the book of genesis 35 when god called jacob to gather his people to meet with him genesis 35 i read from verse 1 then god said to jacob go up to Bethel and set there and build an altar there to god who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother esau so jacob said to his household and to all who were with him get rid of your foreign gods you have with you and purify yourself and change your cloth then come let us go up to better where i will build an altar to god who answer me in the day of distress and who has been with me wherever i have gone verse 4 so when they gave jacob all their foreign god they had they had and the rings in their ear and jacob buried them under the hook at shaken but the question is this jacob did not tell them to remove their earring he only tell them everything that is not pure everything that is not holy they should remove it they are idols specifically on idol every unclean thing but to my surprise they need to remove earring is earring unclean you will answer that by yourself for them to remove earring before they can appear to god mark that point one secondly if you go to the book of exodus chapter 32 exodus 32 you will see where god now point out their mistake when god bring them out of the land of egypt god ordered them in the book of exodus when you, when you read chapter 12 you will see where god ordered them to request for whatever they want from the egyptian and he, he, he give them favor as they go to the egyptian they get pack them gold sliver bread, they pack everything god told them to collect this thing because god he have it in mind that when they get to the land promised land is taking them to he will use this thing as a building materials for the temple of the law that is why he ordered them to collect it he did not order them to collect it for fashion or for making an idol so that is the aim of god by allowing them to collect all these things so that they can convert it to building materials so when they now collected this thing they get to the wilderness and are making an uh, idol let me read it for you exodus 32 let me read from verse 3 so all the people took off their earring and brought them to iron he took what they added unto him and made it into an idol cast the shape of a calf fashioned it with a tooth then they said these are your god O israel who brought you all out of egypt can you see that they transfer the glory of god onto idol if you read your bible very well you know this statement god always claim it i am your god who brought you out of the egypt who delivered you from the power of the uh, uh, pharaoh he always god god feel big in it this language god so god so cherish it very much this is a power this is a statement that god always proof upon israelites imagine this thing that god exalted his name from he touched pharaoh he hidden his heart so that he can proclaim his mighty mighty mightiness upon the whole world now they now use carry all the glory and give ordinary idol that is why the anger of the lord arose and say this idol and that thing you used to made it i don't want to see you upon you that is why the bible says our body is a temple of the lord no iniquity shall dwell in it whenever i want to quote it we always mention demons we only not only demon anything irritating must not remain in your body some people will say eh, god is not god have nothing to do with our body it's our soul it's a lie 
God needs to do with your soul, both your body and your soul. If you go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, he said, I beseech you, give your body as a holy sacrifice unto the Lord. Holy, your body, he did not say your soul, he did not say your heart. He's talking about body there. If God wants to talk about heart, he will talk about heart. If you want to talk about body, you will talk about body. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, if you read verse 26, he said, I'll give you a new heart, a new spirit. He did not talk about body there. But here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, give your body as a living, as a holy sacrifice to the Lord. So, don't allow any pressure to, to, to deceive you. Don't allow anybody to tell you that God is concerned about soul, heart, not body. Both your body and your soul is for God. You must consecrate yourself for God in a holy way. So that is why in this place they they they, they need to remove their injuries and make an idol. Since that day, God told the Israelites that they must not put anything called jewelries in their body anymore. Anytime you want to come to them to visit them or to journey with them, if you see jewelries upon them. God is always annoyed. You may be there and say, all this thing you are talking about is this story. Until you can point me where God command the Israelites not to use it. That is where I want to quote for you now. Go to the book of Ex- Exodus 32. Let me read for you. verse 1. When the people... Sorry. Yes, from verse 1. He said, Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. Verse 2 I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, and Perizzites, Evites, and Jebusites. Verse 3 Go up to the land. Flow with me and honor, but I will not go with you because you are stiff naked people. Imagine, before I can call them stiff naked people, that means he has been giving them warning severally on something he wants to talk about. Say, because you are stiff naked people, and I might destroy you on the way. Verse 4. When the people heard this distress word, they began to mourn. And no one put on any ornament. Listen. In the land of Israel, if they are not happy, if they are in sorrow, if they are mourning, what they normally do, they will tear their clothes. They will shave their hair. They can put ashes on themselves. So to show that they are in sadness. But in this case, they did not tear their clothes. Though. They did not shave their hair. Though. What they started, The first thing they started doing is that removing their ornament. Why? Because they know that is what God is talking about. The theologians can change it for you. They can talk another thing. You know? But this person is talking about jewelry, ornaments. So don't allow any Bible scholar to turn it upside down for you. He said they should remove it. I read verse 5. He said, For the Lord has said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, You are stiff naked people. If I were to go with you, even for a moment, I might destroy you. Destroy you. He now says, Now, Take off your ornament, and I will decide what to do for you. Imagine. God now see that they are mourning. They are, some of them have been removed. Now say, okay, now, because you have been crying, you have been mourning, you have been fasting and praying. Tell them to remove all their ornaments before I can know maybe I will still follow you or not. Before I can take my decision on you. Before I can know maybe I will still go along with you. Let them remove this ornament away before I can take my decision on you. Why God is telling them to remove ornament? What problem did God have with this ornament? So if truly you say you are a descendant of Abraham, if truly you claim Abraham's blessing is yours, if truly you can jump from New Testament to Old Testament and claim Abraham's blessing, but whenever we talk about do not, do not, do not in the Old Testament, you condemn it. This, that one is Old Testament. But Abraham blessing in the Old Testament, you are claiming it. If you can claim the blessing in the Old Testament, the law in the Old Testament is also for you. 
So, if God can command the Israelites not to use ornament, he say he don't want to see it or he can destroy it. Imagine, God ate this thing to extend he can destroy them. That is why you Christian, if truly you want to make heaven. Though, the reason why we are using it today in the church and we are not dying, fire did not fall. Because God Almighty is no more going on with people. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has taken over from God. And now Holy Spirit has taken over from Jesus. We are under grace. Don't worry. Thunder will not kill you in the church today. Fire will not burn. But don't forget that a day is coming you will die on edge. With hearing in your ear. You would rest like idol. With the irritating things that caused God, that arose God's anger, you would die and appear like that. It is then the anger of God in Exodus 33 that make God to say he want to destroy the Israelites if they don't remove it. The same anger will appear on you. If you appear with that thing that caused God to be annoyed, the same anger of that day will come upon you. So if you use jewelries on earth, that does not stop your prayer not to be answered. You can do miracle with it. You may use jewelries. Holy Spirit can still talk to you because you are under grace. But if you die and you appear to God with this, mind you, if heaven and earth pass away, the list of the word of God will never go unfulfilled. Make sure you do not argue with the word of God. You may argue with my word. I'm a human being. I can lie. But the Bible will never, never lie. I can lie, I can deceive you, I'm a human being, I'm a flesh. But God will never, never lie. He's not a human being. I'm quoting it out from Bible. Your Bible, what is written here in my Bible, is there in your own Bible. If you don't believe my fashion, read your own fashion. The same meaning it is there. So please, if truly, you see this, my message is for everyoneans. This message is not for the people that go to church because of the riches in the world. I'm not saying this because of the people that will need miracle in the church. I'm not saying this because of the people that open church for business. Any pastor that open church for business will never take this message. Any pastor that open church for initiation will never take this message. But if you see any pastor, any child of God that have mind to take people to heaven, that have hope of rapture, they must, even though they don't, they don't, take, they don't take my message, they must take the word of God in the Bible. Even though I'm lying, will your Bible lie? So therefore, follow the Bible even though you don't follow my word. God spoken here, not prophet spoken. God say, remove your ornament before I will decide what to do for you. If God can command Israel to remove their ornament, are you not a descendant of Abraham? Is Abraham not the father of the Israel? If truly you are from the same line the same word of God come to you today. If you see people dressing like a suit, they don't put on earring, do all these things. Do you think they are full? Everybody loves to be beautiful. You may say that the gate of heaven is made by gold. The gate of this is made by gold. Yes, the gold in heaven is being made for what they created it for. Okay? The gold in heaven has never been used to make idol. But the one on this earth has been defied. The one on this air has been, been overthrown by the demons. Okay? So, the only way you can use God that can please God is to use it for what God created it for. That is why God ordered Solomon to build his temple with goals. Many goals. So, if you use gold as a puppet in your church, it's a building, materials, house, material, no problem. If you use it as a spoon, as a plate, it's not a sin. But don't use it on your temple. Because this temple, this your body is a temple of the Lord. Iniquity must not dwell there. So that is why you must be careful. Your body belongs to God. You can't use the way you like. You can't use your body the way you like. You must please God with your body. Please take this message. I proceed. So, this is our... In our meeting that day, we come about to know that this, our dressing, ornament, he has been destroying many souls. And we were very happy that day to bring out that point. And we specify, and, 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 and we now take this point as another power to be using mightily in our kingdom. So, 
as I round up shy in that, as we round up in that meeting, we now concluded that that person called Ayodele Babalola, we must deal with him and his ministry. So we sent many agents to Nigeria to come and attack him. But glory be to God, as many as they sent to Nigeria to come and attack this man, he, he will just stand up one day in the church and say, I release the fire of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, to arrest the spirit of darkness in these places. And they will get them arrest. You see them conversing, they will confess, and they will, they will repent. It is only the demon they can eat. They, if they pray like that, they die. But the genuine woman being that being possessed, when they pray for them, they will be delivered. And most of them will turn to lead the evangelists, they will turn to pastor, and they will start losing many candidates. That is why... They, they, they now hold another meeting in order to to make research for uh, superior uh, experienced people uh, those that can do the contract very well that is how they now dictate me out in some years later that I, I should be the one that will come to Nigeria to eradicate those dangerous doctrine that that man established you see let me tell you something you can ask me that what about many men of God women of God has died and won't they make heaven I can't answer that question but I'm telling you what I know you see apart from me many children of God many years ago they have been giving testimony about these jewelries many will sleep God will appear to them Jesus will appear to them many will be in trance they will show them that they should remove their jewelries, they should remove their attachment before they can make heaven. Many has been giving this testimony even because before Jesus Christ met me. If you don't believe me, what about others? Do you think everybody are fool? No. So please don't argue with your eternity. Even though I'm lying here, whatever that is going to make that is going to hinder you from making heaven, better sacrifice it. If it is your beauty, sacrifice whatever you have here. You cannot mention it with eternity. Anything at all that the kingdom of heaven will get from you, sacrifice it, overlook it. Because your beauty, your money, whatever you have, you can compare it with eternity. So please, even though you are a Bible scholar, even though you know more than me, I'm talking about heaven here. We are not talking about a period or some days or country. Heaven is forever. So please, don't argue with your eternity. No matter how you cherish your queries, your beauty, better sacrifice whatever it takes before it will be too late. May God give you grace to please God. Chapter 5 My Encounter with Jesus Christ In the month of February 1985, we had our normal meeting in the sea, after which I decided to travel to Port Harcourt in River State to visit my late uncle's wife. I met a man called Anthony. He has a workshop at Nawaja Junction along Transamati Road, Port Harcourt, River State. He sent for me, and since in our society we have a law never to refuse calls, I decided to answer his call. I went to him in the afternoon on a Thursday of that week. He started by saying God has given him a message for me. He brought out his Bible and started preaching. There were three other Christians seated, a male and two females. He continued his preaching for a long time, and I wasn't sure I heard all he said. He asked me to kneel down for prayers. I obeyed and quietly knelt down. Immediately he started his prayers. I was knocked down by the Spirit of God, and I fell flat. I struggled up and stood like an iron. I destroyed the iron chairs inside the workshop. I looked outside and saw three of our secret society members, a man and two girls. They came in human form and moved towards the door, but because of the power of God, they could not enter. I am sure the alarm in the sea alerted them of the trouble, and with the TV they knew where the problem was, and had sent the powerless rescue team. This always happens when any member runs into trouble. While the two Christian men pulled me down on my knees, the girls continued praying and binding the demons, but they were not specific. They asked me if I believed in Jesus Christ. I said nothing. They asked me to call the name of Jesus. I refused. They asked me my own name, and I told them. They struggled for hours, and released me to go. No spirit was removed from me, so I went out the same way as when I came in. The Church Events The following day being Friday, I was invited by the same Anthony to attend their night vigil at the Assemblies of God Church, Silver Valley, Port Harcourt. 
I accepted this invitation because attending church services to cause slumber and confusion was part of our assignments. The program started with choruses. We sang until one of the members raised a popular chorus by a particular Christian band of the powerlessness of other powers except Jesus' power. Then I started laughing. I laughed because when in the spirit I looked into their lives, almost three-quarters of the people singing this chorus were living in sin. I knew that because of the sins in their lives, they were exposed and could be harmed seriously by these powers. It is important that Christians obey the word of God and not allow besetting sins to remain in their lives. In that service, we were four from the sea and were singing and clapping with them. Again, I want to stress here that when a service is started, members should be advised first to confess their sins, then go into a period of real praises to God. This will make an agent of Satan present very uncomfortable and, in fact, escape for his or her life. In this particular service, we were very comfortable and even went into operation. Many started sleeping. Choruses were sung weekly, and things went zigzag. Brother Anthony had already told them about me, so at about 2 a.m. they called me out to pray for me. As soon as I came out to the front, they started pleading the blood of Jesus. I stopped them and said, It is not pleading the blood that is the solution. I am a deep, secret society member. If you agree that you can deliver me, then will I kneel down. These words I spoke were not premeditated. The blood of Jesus scares the demons and protects the believer, but does not bind demons. Binding of demons only takes place when the Christian uses his authority and gives the command. They agreed, and I knelt down. At that point, a sister, led by the Spirit of God, shouted and said, If you are not worthy, do not come near. I am sure many did not understand what she meant. It is dangerous for a Christian living in sin to cast out demons. Many withdrew, and a few came out to pray for me. As they started with, in Jesus' name, I heard a big bang inside me and fell on the floor. Immediately, the flying demon in me went into action. I started running with my chest. Anybody possessed with this flying demon is always very wicked and dangerous. The brethren never saw what was happening spiritually. I was running because of the stronger power in the room. Two opposing forces went into action, and the atmosphere changed. I suddenly stood up and became very violent. A demon went out of me and possessed a boy in their midst, and he started fighting them, trying to rescue me. The brethren never wasted time with him, rather they took him and others who were afraid to the church vestry and locked them inside. This continued till 7 a.m. I was physically exhausted and became quiet. So the brethren gathered around me again and started shouting, Name them! Who are they? I kept quiet. After waiting for a long time and I said nothing, they were deceived to believe that I was delivered. They prayed and we dismissed. I was so physically weak that I found it difficult to walk out of the church. But something happened, for as soon as I walked out of the church and crossed the road, I became very strong physically. Perhaps some of the demons that left came back. I became very angry and decided to take vengeance on the church. This people had insulted me, I said to myself, and for this insult I was going back to Lagos and get more powers with others as wicked as myself, and then come back to Port Harcourt to take vengeance on all the members of the Assembly of God, Silver Valley. En route to Lagos. On getting to my uncle's wife's house, I told them I was leaving for Lagos immediately. I refused to be persuaded to stay, and I took a taxi to Mile 3 Motor Park, where I took a taxi for Onitsha. My intention was to stop at Onitsha, see a friend, and then proceed to Lagos. At Mile 3 we took off, and on getting to Omagwe at the International Airport Junction, I heard a voice calling me by my native name, Inkeem. I turned around to see if there was a known face in the taxi, but there was none. Who could this be? Only my late mother calls me by that name. All others, including the spirit world, knew me as Emmanuel. While I was still wondering, the voice came again, Inkeem, are you going to betray me again? I did not recognize the voice, but the voice continued asking me, Are you going to betray me again? Suddenly I had severe fever. The heat that came out of my body was so high that the other passengers felt it. One of them asked me, Mister, were you well at all before traveling? I told them I was well and that I never had even a headache before leaving Port Harcourt. At Umuakpa in Oweri, I collapsed inside the taxi. The next I knew was that two men, tall and huge, came to take me, 
one on my left and the other on my right, and they never spoke a word to me. They led me through a very rough road with bottles and medals. As we moved along, these bottles and medals gave cuts, and I started crying, but these men still did not say a word. We moved on and came out to an express road. It was here one of them spoke and said, You are a wanted man. And we continued. We moved on to a very large and long building that looked like a conference hall. As soon as we climbed the pavement, a voice from inside said, Take him in. They took me in and disappeared, leaving me alone. What I saw inside this hall is difficult to explain, but I will try to explain as much as I can. The hall was well decorated and so large and long that one finds it difficult to see the end of it. I walked to the middle and then was able to see the end. At the end was an altar. I saw a moon and stars surrounding the sun. Then I saw a throne, and seated on it was a very handsome man with a garment shining like the sun. He said, Come. But because of his brightness, I could not go. Whenever I tried to move a leg, I would fall. I stood up, tried again, and fell. Suddenly a moon came out of the throne where he was sitting, and moved on the ceiling right up where I stood. Then two hands came out of the moon, held my head, shook me, and my physical body pulled off, like pulling off a dress. And the real me stood. The hands folded, as if folding a cloth, and dropped it at the corner. The moon then moved back to the throne, and then he that sat on it said again, Come. The Spiritual Cleansing I walked to a point, and he stepped out of the throne to me, removed my legs one after another, and poured out what was inside them and fixed them back. He did the same with my hands and put them back. In fact, all the places the Queen of the Coast kept powers. I wondered in my mind, who can this be? And how did he know the spots these things were kept? After this, he went back to his throne and asked me to come. As I started walking, certain objects started falling from my body. Scales fell from my eyes. But before I got to the altar, it stopped. Where are you going? he asked. I answered and said, I am going to Onitsha to see a friend. He said, Yes, but I will show you what you have in your mind. Up till this moment I did not know who he was, but one thing was certain, and that was he was more powerful than all the powers I had come across. He beckoned on a man and asked him to show me what I had conceived in my heart. This man took me to a room and opened something like a blackboard. In fact, if there was a way to escape, I could have escaped. For before me was written all that I had planned against Christians, and my plan against the assemblies of God Church, Silver Valley. The man brought me back to the altar and left. He came out of the throne and took me by his hands and said he was going to show me certain things. On our way, he said, I do not want you to perish, but to save you, and this is your last chance. If you do not repent and come and serve me, you will die. I will show you the abode of the saved and the disobedient. When he said this, I then knew he was Jesus Christ. The Divine Revelations We entered a room, and he opened something like a curtain. I saw the whole world, the people, and all the activities going on. I saw both Christians and unbelievers, all doing one thing or the other. We went into a second room. He opened a curtain again, and what I saw was a sorry sight. People chained! He called these people the hypocrites. These people looked very sorrowful, and he said, They will remain this way until the judgment day. We went into a third room. He opened a curtain, and I saw many people rejoicing and wearing white garments. This time I asked him, Who are these? He said, These are the redeemed, awaiting their rewards. We went into a fourth room, and what I saw was very frightening. Dear reader, it is difficult to describe. It looked like a whole city on fire. Hell is real and terrible. If you had been made to believe that heaven and hell are here on earth, and that man has no hereafter but total annihilation after death, you better be well advised here and now that there is a real hell and there is a real heaven. No wonder when Jesus Christ was on earth he warned man about hell. I say it again, hell is real. I saw it, and it is a terrible place. I asked him, what is it? His answer was, This is prepared for Satan and his angels, and for the disobedient. He named them as recorded in Revelation 21.8. But the fearful, and unbelieving, 
and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We went into a fifth room, and when he opened a curtain, what I saw can only be described as glorious. It was as if we were looking at it from a mountain top. I saw a new city. The city was so large and beautiful. The streets are made of gold. The buildings could not be compared with anything in this world. He said, This is the hope of the saints. Will you be there? Immediately I answered, Yes. After this we went back to the throne and he said, Go and testify what I have done for you. Again he took me to another room, and when he opened a curtain I saw all that I was going to encounter on my journey to Onitsha and Lagos, and how he would finally deliver me. After this he said to me, Do not be afraid. Go. I will be with you. He led me out of the hall and vanished, and I woke up on a bed in another man's house. I shouted, so the man and his wife ran out from their room. They first peeped and then came in. Why am I here? I asked. The man then narrated how I collapsed in the taxi, and how they carried me to the Catholic cathedral there in Oweri, how they sent for a doctor, who came, and after examining me said my pulse was normal, and that they should wait and see what would happen. The doctor gave them the assurance that I would revive. The man then took me in his car to his house, and had been waiting. He also confessed he never knew why he believed the doctor, and why he took responsibility of taking me to his house. They asked me my name and address, which I gave them, and after that I kept quiet and never told them my experience. I stayed calmly with this kind family for two days, and then the man and his wife drove me to the Oweri Motor Park, where I took a taxi to Onitsha. All that the Lord showed me about my journey happened one after the other. I took another taxi to Lagos first thing the following morning. I obeyed and left Lagos for Port Harcourt the following morning. I often asked myself, why would the Lord save a man like me, a man so wicked and destructive, an agent of Satan? I found the answer in these three words. God is love. Indeed, God is love. Chapter 6 Temptation and Victory My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10, 27-28 After my conversion to Christ, the first thing that happened was all the gifts from the sea, the telescope, the TV, shirts, photographs I snapped inside the sea laboratories, and the photograph of the Queen of the Coast, which were displayed in my flat, vanished. On returning to Port Harcourt, I had the urge to testify what the Lord had done for me, but was not allowed in the church. My late uncle's wife, who is also a Christian, took me to one of the pastors. But the question he asked was, Did he bring the paper? It was later that I understood that the paper he meant was a membership letter. What has a membership letter to do with my testifying the power of Christ and what he has done for me? God, translating me from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom I have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of my sins. I was sad, having known that Satan does not allow young converts to go about testifying, especially those who previously were deeply involved in his activities, and would do everything to stop such testimonies. Again I remembered, the Lord clearly instructed me to go and testify what I have done for you, and here I was faced with rejection. Perhaps it was not yet time. So I decided to shelve giving my testimony to anyone. I traveled with three traders from Abba to Togo for a business trip. There I bought goods worth 160,000 naira. Out of this amount, my personal money was 70,000 naira, while the remaining 90,000 naira was borrowed from traders in Abba. Amongst the things I bought were bundles of laces, assorted drugs, especially antibiotics, injections, thermometers, etc. At the Nigerian border, we were held by the customs and later were asked to pay some bribe. We refused, and the goods were seized, including those belonging to my colleagues. A few months later, those belonging to my colleagues were released, except mine. I went back later and was asked to pay 40,000 naira, 
but on checking the goods, I discovered that all the valuable goods, bundles of laces, injections, drugs, were already stolen. I assessed the remaining goods and knew that paying 40,000 naira to the customs would only increase the loss, so I decided to forego the remaining goods. The traders whose money I borrowed started chasing me. Some called the police. Others took the laws into their hands and planned to do away with my life. The only solution was to close my bank accounts and use all the money I had to settle all the debts. By God's grace, I paid all except 1,000 naira meant for my landlord in Lagos. I went completely bankrupt and would borrow even 20k for taxi fare. I went to a few business Christians I knew then to seek help to enable me to start afresh. None said yes or no. Rather, I would be asked to come the following day repeatedly until I would be tired or find help. I did not know the word of God, and with all the confusion in my heart, I would read the Bible and would not understand. Still contemplating on what to do, I received an urgent call from my village. I rushed home and found that the little building I was setting up had been pulled down by my uncle, who was also present, and threatened to kill me. The old nature in me was challenged. I remembered when I was with the secret society how he dreaded me and would go on his knees before me. But now he knew I was a changed man. How he knew I did not know as I had not traveled home since my conversion. And he now threatened me. I called on the Lord and said, So you saved me to leave me frustrated and to allow my enemies to rejoice over me? I wept and decided to go back to the society. At least I would be saved from all the confusion, and would also teach my uncle a lesson he would never forget all his life. Although I took the decision, I had two prominent fears within me. Number one, during my conversion the Lord clearly told me, This is your last chance. My going back to the society might mean death, not only physical, but also spiritual death. Number two, if I remained in the Lord, my uncle was breathing threats to kill me. I was so confused, and I needed help. I was ignorant of the word of God, and never knew what the word says in respect of the above. Dear reader, you will realize here that I had all these confusions because of lack of follow-up as a young convert. Follow-up for young converts is very important, and Christians should take this seriously. If you know you cannot follow up your converts, please do not go out for witnessing. Jesus Christ emphasized this three times when he asked Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my lambs. Many converts backslide because of lack of proper follow-up. If you love Jesus, take care of his lambs. The Battle with Satan's Agents During this period, the Queen of the Coast's agents started pursuing me. I suffered greatly in their hands. I had nightmares. On the 1st of May, 1985, a month after my conversion, at about 2 a.m., others in the house were asleep. I was awakened by these agents. They commanded me to walk out of the house. I obeyed, walked out, and they followed behind. It was all happening like a dream, but this was in reality. We moved on to the burial ground by St. Paul's Anglican Church, off Abba Road, Port Harcourt. On reaching there, they said, You must come back. If you refuse, we will kill you or make you a destitute. After this instruction, they left. I regained my senses and wondered how I came into the burial ground. I went back to bed and slept. They decided to attack me in the afternoons. At times, while walking along the road, they would fight me. Others around would see me fighting with the air, or see me running as if being pursued. I alone would be seeing them. This they did four times and stopped. Then their leader, the Queen of the Coast, took over. The first day she came in a car and parked beside our house. She was well-dressed and, as usual, very beautiful. People around took her to be my girlfriend. Immediately she came in, and I knew who she was. She came at about twelve noon, when the whole area was less busy. She sat down and, among other things, said, You can go to your church. Believe whatever you want to believe. But if only you will not reveal me, I will give you anything you need in this life. I had not known the scriptures, so I only listened and watched her walk. She pleaded and tried to persuade me to come back to her. I never said yes or no to her. She stood up, walked into her car, 
and drove off. About two times my uncle's wife entertained her without knowing who she was, and I never told my uncle's wife who the lady was. During her last visit, she changed her approach. This time she gave me a stern warning, saying that she had tried during these visits to persuade me to come back to her, and that I had been very stubborn, and that this was her last visit. If I still refused to come back, she would come to me in August, and would either kill me, or disfigure me, or make me destitute. With this, she left. I was afraid, so one day I went to the church and called out a brother. I told him my problems and my observations on some members of the church. This brother gave me the Scripture Union's office address and told me, There you will find help. Incidentally, that was the last day I saw this brother. I have never seen him anywhere in Port Harcourt up till this date. I took the address and the following day took a taxi to number 108 Bonnie Street, where the office is, and met the typist who gave me the quarterly program of activities of the Scripture Union Rumuo Masi Pilgrims Group, being the one nearest to me. She said, Come on Sunday. I was there at the Fellowship Center, St. Michael's State School, Rumuo Masi, at 2 p.m., not knowing that the fellowship starts at 3 p.m., but I met the prayer band, so I joined them. After the fellowship that day, I knew this was the right place for me. God provided me with a Christian lady whom I took as a mother, who took interest in explaining the word of God to me, and counseled me as well. The brethren became very interested in me and cared. I saw real love. The Holy Spirit began giving me understanding of the word, and my faith grew. But the queen of the coast did not show up as she threatened. Psalm 91. God's protection was fulfilled in my life. Isaiah 57, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. This also was fulfilled. September 1985. I received a message that my name appeared as a distributor with the silver brand cement, Lagos, and that I was expected to report at the office on 27985. I left Port Harcourt on 26985 and arrived in Lagos in the night. The following morning, I went into the office only to be told by the personnel manager that my allocation had been assigned to someone else. He asked me to repeat the following day to see the managing director. On my way back to my flat, Passing through a path, someone came from behind and gripped me and tried to suffocate me. They held my nose and mouth together. I struggled for life, and while people passed by, none came to my rescue. But the Lord intervened. While I still struggled with the hands, I heard her shout and pushed me away, saying, Who is that person behind you? She repeated a second time and disappeared. From the voice I knew it was a woman, but never saw who she was. I was dazed and staggered to my flat. Here again my landlord was very furious and said, Why did you run away with the money of my rent? I pleaded with him and tried to explain that presently I was not working and would pay all his money as soon as I had money. With the way he consented, I thought this matter was settled. The following day, 28 985, I went back to the office and met the managing director, who apologized for having given my allocation to another. While he was talking, a young man walked in and asked me, Are you not Emmanuel? I said, Yes, I am. He said, Yes, we have got you at last. Have you finished running? We have visited Port Harcourt several times and found that you were always with your spiritual mother. She had been a stumbling block to us, and now that you have come to Lagos, we have caught you. You can never go back to Port Harcourt. I am the one that took your allocation. I challenged him and told him, You can't do anything. The managing director was surprised at what was happening in his office. I excused myself and left for the flat. A few minutes later I heard a knock on my door, and Nina entered. She asked me if I was going back to Port Harcourt. I answered yes. She pleaded with me to come back to them, and that the jobs I was particularly trained for were still lying unaccomplished. Kotipari, in the Yoruba language. I had been trained to be in charge of the agents of demonic powers, to be in charge of the sea control room, to monitor the happenings in the world, to send and receive signals, and to mobilize forces, etc., to be next to the queen of the coast. This involved not only ceremonies, sacrifices, execution of special assignments by her, 
but also other things difficult to explain. With the assistance of the powers of darkness to establish new secret societies that would appear harmless so to attract young people and more churchgoers. She said, if I accompanied her, what awaited me was double promotion and many blessings. She confessed they were responsible for my goods being seized and stolen, also that they instigated my uncle to destroy my building and to threaten my life, that if I refused following her, they would do more and make sure that I did not prosper, that they had decided to fight my spiritual mother. If we get her, we've got you, she said. At that, I started preaching to her. She stood up and said, They are deceiving you, and left. This took place in the evening of 28-985. Not quite fifteen minutes after she left, I heard another knock. This time there were four men. They beckoned on me to come out, and I saw myself going along with them. We walked up to about two poles, and one of them asked me, Do you know us? I said, No. He continued, We have been hired by your landlord to kill you. While he was still speaking, one among them brought out a gun, and another brought out a dagger. I was defenseless and knew that they would kill me. But God, in his supernatural manner, performed a miracle that surprised both myself and themselves. The man with the gun fired at me, but there was no sound. The man with the dagger used it on my back, but it never penetrated. Rather, it sounded like using a rod on someone. They were as frightened as I was. The Spirit of God came on me, and I started preaching. Three of them ran away, but the fourth man broke down and started weeping, and pleaded that I should pray for him. I did not even know what to pray at that time, but only said, Lord, please forgive, forget, and pardon him. Amen. He gave his life to Christ, so I took him to a Pentecostal church, and explained what happened to the pastor. I handed him over to the pastor, and left. As I walked into the house, the landlord ran out and on his knees started pleading and said, Please forgive me. I thought you decided to run away to Port Harcourt because of my money, 1,000 Naira. I forgave him and we finally agreed that the money be paid by installments. That same night, about 2 a.m., the Lord woke me up. I did not know why I woke up, so I walked to the living room and what I saw was a large tortoise facing me. Immediately I remembered the Bible study we had in Port Harcourt about the power in the word. I then spoke these words, Tortoise, since I was born, the home of the tortoise is either the bush or the sea. But for coming into my house while windows and doors are locked, you have sinned, and for this you must die. As soon as I said this, it vanished. I went back to the room and slept. A second time again, I woke up and heard some noise in the living room. I went, and there standing before me was a horrible-looking vulture. I repeated the same words, and as soon as I said, For committing this sin you must die, it vanished also. During this Lagos trip, I saw God's goodness, greatness, and faithfulness. The following morning, 29-985, I took a luxurious bus to Port Harcourt. Reaching Orr, the bus ran onto a tree. It got damaged, but no one was hurt. The driver pulled it out back to the road, and as he drove along, the bus started swerving from one side of the road to the other. I remembered Nina's threats, so I stood up in the bus, preached to the passengers, and concluded by saying, It is because of me that these accidents are happening. But from now on, there shall be no more accidents until we get to Port Harcourt, in Jesus' name. And I sat down. In fact, when I sat down, I wondered at what I had said. And so it was. The vehicle moved smoothly to Port Harcourt. No more accidents or breakdowns. The scripture rightly says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Isaiah 54.15 They, the queen of the coast and her agents, tried. But because their gathering was not unto the Lord, but against his child, they all stumbled and fell. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard against him. Isaiah 59, 19 I give God all the glory for showing himself strong on my behalf. Chapter 7 Activities of Satan's Agents Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Ephesians 6, 11-12. This book would not be complete if the different methods of operation of these powers are not exposed. Also, it is important that the different forms in which they manifest themselves be exposed. One thing is clear, and that is, the devil would either encourage you to believe that he is a myth, or simple evil thoughts, or would make you see more of his powers and less of the powers of God. While the Bible says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible also says that the weapons of the Christians against the devil and his agents are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 4-5 Again the scriptures clearly declare, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8 And Jesus, having spoilt principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Proverbs 6, 2. Say the scriptures. Therefore the child of God must be careful to confess the word of God, which God has promised he will hasten to perform. There are three confessions stated in the word of God. Number one, confession of the lordship of Christ. Number two, confession of faith in the word in Christ, and in God the Father. Number three, confession of sin. When we hear the word confession, we easily think of sin. The dictionary definition of confession is, number one, affirming something we believe. Number two, testifying to something that we know. Number three, witnessing of a truth we have embraced. It is therefore to be regretted that whenever we use the word confession, some minds run to sin. The author is here encouraging the child of God to start today to confess what God has said. You who were dead in trespasses had God quickened together with Christ, and he has raised you up together and made you sit in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, in Christ Jesus. Christians should therefore realize where they are seated. They should know that they are operating from that height, above Satan and his agents. The Lord Jesus Christ has given you all powers and authority, just as he has given you all that pertains to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1, 3 God never intended that circumstances should control his children, rather that the word of God in the mouth of the Christian should control his circumstances. God spoke in Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine, saying, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer, that breaketh the rock in pieces. Christians, I mean born-again Christians, should realize that when the name of Jesus is pronounced, what comes out of their mouth is fire. When a Christian stands on the authority given him by Christ and gives a command in Jesus' name, fire pours out of his mouth and any demon controlling the circumstances must obey. Jesus is alive today to see to it that every word of his comes to pass. Again, I want to highlight an important fact many Christians overlook, and which Satan is using. Jesus, after Peter pointed out to him the dried fig tree cursed by the Lord, said in Matthew's account, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Matthew 21, 21 through 22. In Mark's account, it says, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mark eleven, twenty two through twenty five. Here the Lord points out to us the power of the spoken word, and also encourages the Christian to be specific in his prayers and in exercising his authority. Some Christians ask the mountain to move, but do not tell the mountain where to go. Jesus said, If you shall say to the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. 
Let us take the case of casting out demons, for instance. Some Christians bind and cast out demons without sending them to specific destinations. This is dangerous. When you bind the demon, it is bound. If you cast it out without sending it to a specific destination, it remains within the vicinity. If the demon is only rebuked out of a man, he may later come back or enter into anyone around who is not a Christian. Therefore, Christians should be careful when dealing with demons. Make sure the demon is bound, cast out, and sent to a specific destination. Some Christians, while praying, would say, I arrest you demons in Jesus' name. In the spirit world, you really see demons standing erect, waiting for the next command. But if the Christian stops at that point, he has not helped the victim. Do not play around with the devil. You don't play around with your enemy. God has sent you out on a ministry of deliverance and reconciliation, reconciling men to God. Therefore, you must be careful to do a thorough work. I repeat, when you bind a demon, it is bound. When you cast it out to any destination, it is so. As long as you do not meddle with sin, but live in the will of God, whatever command you give the devil or his agents in the name of Jesus must be obeyed. God has promised to back every word of his. As we go on to the next phase, manifestation of Satan and his agents, I want you to have the following passages on your mind. Number 1. Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Colossians 2, 10. Number 2. Behold, I give you power, authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Number 3. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. I want to show you in this book that these evil forces operate mainly in churches, marketplaces, graveyards, jungles, hotels, sea, and air. In the churches, we are witnesses today that there are many possessed persons in the churches. Some speak in tongues and even prophesy. Only those with the Spirit of God can discern these fellows. But we are here discussing the agents of Satan in the churches. Again, we are not discussing the secret cult members who are in the churches. Some are even leaders. We know they are there. What I am talking about is those who come in as agents of Satan. Number one, to cause quarrels and confusion in the churches. Number two, to scatter the churches. Number three, to make men and women sleep while the sermon is on. Number four, to cause distraction of various sorts when the service is on. Number five, to win souls for Satan. Since I had already said a few things on the above in chapter three, I will only give you a testimony of what happened in the recent past. Christians should abide by every word of the Lord Jesus Christ because when they disobey or compromise, they are prone to fall at the slightest attempt of Satan or his agents. Christians have been called out from darkness into God's own marvelous light. Christians have been called to total separation from the world and what it offers. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the scripture. There was this sister, Sister J, name withheld. She was born again and was a full member of one of the living churches. She later transferred her membership to my own denomination. She partook in all the activities in the church and was very active in them. But her character at a point became suspicious. So a few of us decided to visit her at her house and to find out what was really wrong with her. While interviewing her, the spirits in her were provoked and began manifesting, and then told us she was their agent in the church. These demons were cast out of her, and deliverance was ministered to her. Sister, how come you are an agent of Satan, yet a full member of the church? we asked. What she told us was the following. It all started one day, after a Sunday service. A sister, a female believer in Christ, so she thought, came to her, and expressed her desire to be close to her because, according to this sister, she admires Sister Jay's Christian life. She accepted her friendship without reservations. 
The two went to Sister J's house, and the so-called sister brought out bananas and ground nuts, which they both ate. She stayed with Sister J for a while, and later left. Her visits became regular, and on each visit she brought gifts to Sister J. The gifts ranged from dresses, shoes, money, etc. On some occasions, Sister J's friend would come with many other girls. This continued for a period, and when the sister saw that she had succeeded in putting out the light of Christ in Sister J, she changed and started visiting Sister J in the spirit. Sister J was then given a red cloth, a water stone, a ring for her right toe, and a chain for her ankle. Because she had eaten so much with them and had taken so much from them, there was no chance of turning back. She entered into covenant with them and started attending their meetings. She could change into a snake, a bat, etc. She then became their agent to win souls for them in the church. Praise God she is now delivered. All the gifts given her were destroyed, and she is now happy again in the Lord. Dear reader, it all started with an unusual friendship, and because Sister J lacked the spirit of discernment and was not watchful as is commanded by the Lord, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. She went astray and fell deep into the hands of the enemy, and her race could have ended in hell because of carelessness. You can easily identify Satan's agents with the following. They wear rings on one of their big toes, chains around their ankle, nose rings, unusual bangles, etc. They could enter into a church or fellowship and be very zealous in the activities of the group or church, just for a single Christian they are after. Some behave abnormally. Others are wicked, etc. That is why the child of God should ask God for the spirit of discernment to enable him or her to identify them at a glance. The moment they know you have recognized them, they make sure they do not come near you. The reason being that their master will warn them about you. In the market places, they operate in various forms in the market. The market is one of their major areas of operations, just as the hotel is where they lay in wait for men. In the market, they pick their victims, some pregnant women whose miscarriages they cause to enable them to get the blood for their blood banks. Some victims they would accompany to their residence in order to visit such in the nights. This happens to the unbelievers. Certain fanciful products sold in the market, e.g. necklaces, lipsticks, perfumes, and food items such as sardines, queen of the coast, etc., have strange origins. There are certain actions Christians have to watch out for. You might see a lady or perhaps a gentleman who suddenly touches your stomach or any part of your body. The Christian, therefore, should, on experiencing this, give the word of command in Jesus' name, scattering or destroying the plans of the devil, and sure enough, whatever you scatter or bind here on earth shall be so. Cultural Activities It is also very important to note that many people get initiated into Satan's activities or get possessed through most of these cultural ceremonies and dances. Most of our cultures are demon-oriented, some through friends, others through reading some pamphlets or novels. Demons hover in the vicinity of every idol. They function through idols in the practice of idolatry. Zechariah 10, 2 As a definite part of religion, idolatry ascribes divine power to natural agencies and pays divine honor to a created object. Romans 1, 18-22 The scripture defines idolatry as spiritual adultery. Jeremiah 3, 8-10 Therefore, a child of God should have no connection whatsoever, directly or indirectly, with idolatry. So-called high life, juju, and disco music are inspired by Satan and his demons. I do remember that before the Lord saved me, in one of the meetings we had with Satan, he said, this world is mine, and I am going to rule the whole world in my power, and would destroy all who believe in the name of the Righteous One. Satan does not mention the name of Jesus. If anyone does that in his presence, he or she stands the risk of losing his life. He promised making those of us his agents, governors, etc. Satan is a liar, and indeed the father of lies. There were also plans to silence the Christians in Nigeria by restricting importation of Bibles and Christian literature. He operates through unbelievers in positions of leadership and authority to initiate anti-Christian policies and programs. 
He establishes healing centers which would appear very religious and through them claim souls. These centers, usually called spiritual healing homes, are all around us. Here many lying wonders are performed to deceive their clients. Satan is very much aware of the second coming of Jesus Christ and constantly urges his agents to hurry and to be ardent in their operations, always saying, We have no time left. Dear child of God, Satan is not sleeping. Why must you sleep? Chapter 8 The Believer's Weapons The Name of Jesus The Blood of Jesus The Word of God Christian Praises Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10-11 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, 11. I have already said much on this earlier, but just to give a few instances, please realize that there is power in that name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. The scripture says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 8-11 Again the scripture says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, 11. Let the name Jesus always be on your lips, these two, the name and the blood, scatter the plans of Satan, and in fact destroy the strategies of Satan and his agents. Secondly, you must learn to sing praises to God, always. There is power in praises. There was this pastor, Pastor I.K., name withheld. He was pastoring a church in Ebute Meta. He became my target, and his offenses were, number one, he disturbed our peace by carrying out early morning calls, i.e. preaching in the early hours. Number two, he went about with his megaphone and stationed himself at number two bus stop along Akintola Road, Abute Meta. There he would preach. He would not stop at that, but would keep binding demons, etc. Number three, in his church he would preach, exposing the works of darkness, after which he started binding demons. Number four, he prayed a lot. Number five, he was always singing and praising God. I sent my messengers to him, but they could not kill him, so I decided to carry out the mission myself. On the said day, I saw him walking along the new GRA. A thing worth mentioning here about this pastor is, any time we went for him, we would see pillars of cloud by his right and left hands, walking along with him, so these hindered us. But this particular day I saw nothing, so I was doubly sure my mission would be very successful. I commanded rain to fall to enable me to strike him with thunder. The rain started, and the thundering began. All the trees in the area started losing their branches, but this pastor was singing joyfully. I still remember the chorus. In Jesus' name every knee shall bow. As he continued with this chorus, the rain stopped, the thundering ceased. There appeared immediately two angels, one of each side, with flaming swords. Their eyes and the swords were like flames of fire. Then a strong wind carried me away, and I found myself in another town. In fact, I was baffled. But because we were so hardened, what I said was, This man has escaped again. The pastor did not know the spiritual war that was fought on his behalf. So, you can see, the child of God is well secured. When the Bible says, Nothing shall by any means hurt you, it means what it says. The second testimony is about a Christian who boarded the same taxi with me. He was very zealous and started distributing gospel tracts inside the taxi. When he gave me the tract, I rejected it. He started preaching. So I became disturbed and knocked him with the ring on my finger. That was to kill him. This boy shouted, The blood of Jesus! Immediately lightning and fire and an angel appeared. A strong wind again removed me with great force out of the taxi and into the thick jungle. Had it not been that I was a man backed by evil powers, I could have got lost in the jungle. The Christian did not know the war that went on his behalf. All he knew, including the other passengers, 
was that I had disappeared from the taxi. The name of Jesus, or the blood of Jesus, in the mouth of the believer sends out fire. The scripture says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Proverbs 18.10 Dear reader, if you are a child of God, remember that God has magnified His word above all His name. Psalms 138.2 Therefore, confess the word, the word of God, believing that what you said shall come to pass, and it shall be so. That is God's promise. Again, I would like to mention here that you can only confess what you know. The scripture enjoins us to delight in the word of God, meditating on it day and night. For you to rightly divide the word of truth, you must know it. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. Again, Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he also shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water, that bringeth forth its fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Get close to your Bible. Pray without ceasing. Have a singing heart and stand. Exercise the authority given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 9 Now, what next? The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Revelation 22:17. Therefore come out from them and be separate, say the Lord. Toss no unclean things, and I will receive you. That means if you are not different from there, God will not receive you after death. Beware of this. You may doubt me, but don't doubt the word of God. You must think twice before you condemn my message. As I was saying, this is how I started my assignment. Before I came to Africa for my assignment, I need to consult the superior ones that have been there before me. Those that understand things going on in the kingdom of darkness. I need to consult Queen of the Coast. I consult many kingdoms for their advice so that they can put me through so that I will not make mistakes because African assignment is a very difficult assignment which many people have fallen away from. So, and they promised me that if I can, if I can pass, if I can succeed in this assignment, they will promote me to a position that being vacant since the day of Christ. There's a woman in the Bible called Mary Magdalene. Since Jesus Christ has delivered that woman, her position has been so difficult for anybody to come to. If you know a woman called Victoria Aito, he's an African. She's a woman that wedded with devil. It was the time they want to promote her to that position, Jesus Christ got her arrested. It was this same position they promised me if I can succeed in Africa assignment, they will promote me to that position. But since they have been appointing people for this position, Jesus Christ normally arrests them. That is why if God delivers, He give you total deliverance. Anybody Jesus Christ deliverance, deliver, He will never go back into it. So if you are there, you say that, don't mind them. If they confess, they always go back. That will never be my portion in Jesus' name. If all that fall, that does not mean that I will fall. If you see all that dying, that does not mean that you should pronounce death to others. I decide to live forever in Christ. I will never go back. For those who pray for me every day, the Lord will enable you also to make heaven. But if you condemn me, mind you, God did not condemn me. I will remain in this world by the grace of God. And the word of God shall strengthen me and I will make heaven. So please, I'm not telling you to love me or to like my message, but hold on to, hold on to the word of God. What I'm saying is this. In that our meeting, as I go to them for advice, they now give me keys how I can do it. But in the kingdom of darkness, they say I should go, I should go and prepare my proposal before they will give me, approve my assignment. And in, our, in the kingdom of darkness, before we carry out any assignment or contract, we do proposal. 
and your proposal there must be quotation of bible that will use against anybody that will fall under your trap so and in my quote in my proposal the quotation i give is roman chapter one roman chapter one from verse 26 i read roman chapter one verse 26 i read from here he said because of this god gave them over to shameful loss even their women exchange natural relations relations for unnatural you may say what's the meaning of this he said women exchange natural anything called natural is natural is either sexual or the part of your body he said women exchange natural for unnatural and when he get to verse 32 he now released the judgment he said although they know god righteousness decree that those who do such things deserve death it means that anybody is not only that vessel to the end though or they mention many sin there but i'm just telling you the one i point out for my own purpose proposal so you now say anybody that did this especially anybody that changed natural for natural either sexual or dressing so far you just change the natural thing god gave to you to unnatural the bible say you deserve death and uh, he said they not only continue to do this very thing but also approve of those who pre- pre- uh, practice in them this one is talking about some people they say they are born again they don't do it but they have salon if anybody bring attachment or bring relaxer they will do it for them if you say you are not doing it and you are doing it for somebody you are also being condemned that is why if you say you are not there separate from them so these are the quotations i put in my proposal and some other quotations like that and they accepted it from me so that is why they gave me the contract and when i want to start my work polluting the christian deal i start from establishing fake churches because if there's no counterfeit you will not appreciate the original we need to establish counterfeit then the original will know what they are they are doing so we need to establish counterfeit church before we can have counterfeit church we must have counterfeit ministers in the kingdom of darkness let me tell you something you ministers listening to this some people some ministers say they are righteous they are holy and they know that some people are evil and they will get themselves they started praying against them all oh, fake prophets that eh, i will disgrace you yes god can answer that prayer but not the way you are expecting it let me tell you one secret devils are wise in their kingdom but they are powerless holy spirit make us wiser than them if we obey the word of god you'll be wise but if you commit sin you become fool in the kingdom of darkness all the power they use for miracle let me just tell you the truth devil doesn't have power for miracle it is the power given to the genuine minister of god from heaven that they collect by sexual intercourse and they give they they take it to their store they store it and they use it to ordain their fake ministers that is why you see them walking the way the children of god walking they do miracle like jesus that is why you see whenever you pray against them it doesn't affect them because they are using the same power of god against the work of god then they will not have power for miracle this is how we collect it from the children of god we have women's agents when a minister of god is powerful when the anointing of god is highly filled up in him we will send this our agents we can send them as a worker in the church as a sponsor of the church they will get close to the pastor they will be too good to pastor they will be humble to pastor pastor will have special interest in them because they are good if man is good you must know he's good so they are ready to give whatever they have to the to the ministry and uh, from this they will be closer to the minister and from there that we may use them we may use they may use this opportunity to try initiate and to seduce pastor and if this pastor can mistakenly fall in love with this agent i have sexual intercourse with them this is how we do it we have snake in the private part of those women if pastor just have sexual intercourse with them and release in their body either you use condom or not whatever you use the real sperm will go straight to the body of that woman and the snake in the private part will open mouth and swallow this sperm. and in the night this snake will now move out 
go to the lab in the marine world you will vomit this spam there when it's vomit they will scan it they will know the level of this glory they are anointing this spam do you know that all men listen to this your glory your riches your everything you have in it is in your spam that is why if you spam any woman anyhow your glory may be shattered away both anointing and glory all is torn in the spam that is why if you fornicate too much before your marriage you may not be you may you may not give birth to good children because all the glorious thing your spam has been given now to useless women that is why when you fornicate you can soul off your life and your eternity from it so from this spam we take the anointing and we store it to prepare our fake ministers so when we prepare them and listen this is our fake minister we are we endow them with wisdom they have wisdom they are wise let me tell you something there's something we call microchip implanted even these fake ministers of god they have they have riches in the word of god more than you want because all the computer has been implanted into their brain by the microsoft microsoft so we have installed all the quotation, every statement in the Bible in their brain. So when they preach, you see them, they will quote it, they will quote this, they will quote it, they will interpret it. When they preach, you genuine man of God will open your mouth as if you are a dumb. You are a mumu. You'll be surprised. Hey, God is great. The man is talking. Be careful. Go back to the Bible. Forget about what they talk. Forget about how good they are. Go back to the Bible. God is there in your Bible. Beware. Don't follow their deceit. They may write many no uh, novel i too i read novel but don't be carried away with, from it they may say seven true word of god and they will have to lie into it that seven true they say will make you to admit the two lies and you'll be deceived so please anytime you read novel go back to bible anything you read there that is not along with the faith you have in the bible be careful I'm not telling you, I'm not mentioning anybody's name for you. But I myself, particularly talking to you here, I have more than 2,000 ministers. I have ordained from the Marine Kingdom and they have established church in this world and they are general us here today. They are operating, they are doing miracles today and nobody can stop them unless God. I myself have gone to, I've gone to some of them in order to do resuscitation. They need to call to police station and uh, police and arrest me. They say I'm a liar. They say I'm mad. I've tried to rescue them. They refuse because they believe it is God that called them. Don't you know? This is how I call them. In the dream, I will go to them in their dream. I will talk like a God, like God. I will say, if the name is Samuel, I will say, Samuel, hear the voice of God. I'm the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I want to send you a message. Carry your cross and follow me. I want to send you to the world. To, 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 to deliver my people from the power of darkness, to stop them from watching people idol, to save their soul. I'll give you anointing and power for healing, for breakthrough, for blessing. Comfort my people and I will, order, I, will, I will honor you. I will bless you. I will give you power to go through all over the world and I will be with you. I'm your God Almighty. And the person, if he wake up, won't that person think it is God? He will believe it is God that is talking to him because according to the bible that is how god calls his people because we have been trained to imitate god and his angel if we don't deceive how would they follow us so that is how i call many people and all the signs that follow genuine call we also follow if they refuse we can affect them we can give them problem they can start there in the work their business can spoil all the system god uses in calling the same system we use children of god beware i'm not saying god did not call people god is still calling people but acts very well what is the name of the God that called you? If you have called, the first thing is not to go to Bible college. The first thing is to go into prayer. Give yourself long days of prayer. Ask very well so that you don't regret. What is the name of the God that called me? Are you Jehovah Jireh? Jehovah God? Ask if it's Jehovah God. Quote him with the word of God so that he can, he can mention, he can tell you who he is. You can pray, pray to God, call him your, your creator. Let God expose the secrets of this call to you. The covenant of God with you, the name of your call, the land of your call. So that when you start, his covenant will be repeated. When any problem comes, you will, you will remind him he is covenant. That is why 
I need to tell you that everybody here, you must go back to the word of God. Anyhow you serve God, check the Bible as you, as you follow. Please, in this series, I cannot finish all what I promise. You follow me to series three, when I will, t- I will explain how I, how I, I, I do my work, how I, I took the church into the world, how I polluted the Christendom, especially by women dressing. God bless you. One usually thinks of misfortune as an act of fate and that we can do nothing to alter the events of our lives. To an extent, this is true. In the case of a child of God, his life is planned. Proverbs 16, 9 Whether that plan is fulfilled or not depends on a number of factors. The individual's closeness to God, his view about the ultimate purpose of life, and the socio-spiritual environment in which he finds himself. The course of your life is challenged by some external forces. The crisis is reached when you give over your will one way or the other, for good or evil. You can love or hate. You can wish to understand or misunderstand. The will to obey is the greatest force of a newborn Christian, while the will to disobey is the most destroying force of the sinner. A child, when left alone in the world, is controlled by one of two powers, good or bad, right or wrong, God or the devil. Everyone is challenged by these two forces of life, and each one must choose which life he must live. And I believe that is what the Bible says. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he grows he will not depart from it. You will agree that the dearest and closest person to any child's heart is his mother. An orphan is an unfortunate child, and more exposed to attacks of the devil than children with parents. A mother is a protector of body and soul, but it becomes double tragedy when both parents are lost, and more so in most mysterious circumstances. Having read through this testimony, you need no further preaching to give your life to Jesus Christ. The scripture says, The thief, Satan, cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I, Jesus Christ, have come that you might have life, and have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. Satan hates you, and has devised various means of taking you to hell with him. That you can testify from this testimony. If Satan makes a promise to you, or even gives you a gift, know that it is ill-intentioned. Satan is a liar, and the father of lies. God called him your enemy. Why not believe God and his word? It is not by accident that you came across this testimony. Examine yourself, and make sure you are in Christ. You will only succeed in deceiving yourself if you choose to remain a churchgoer, and worst of all, if you still decide to put up a nonchalant attitude to this most important decision of your life. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. If you are not yet saved, that means if according to the word of God you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior yet, following by water baptism by immersion, we encourage you to do so without delay. Tomorrow may be too late.